evening, radio fans, and welcome back to another week later episode of Davy Max Tales from the Satellite. I'm your host, Bobby Tambaro, and joining me as always is the Irish Cobra, what rocking his Irish jersey. You know him, you love him. It's why we tune in, ladies and gentlemen, Davy, David Mack. McDonald. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even though, you know, you kind of, uh, the ending, the, your, your endings, they kind of sort of wilt away. You I'm know? like the Yankees. You, you know what you got to do is, is yeah. You gotta <laughs> come in there, punch in, you know, punch your intro and get the hell out of there. It's like, you, you're like, and now here's the start of the show. Davey Mac, uh, side Dave Mac. Uh, I McDonald's, always, uh, he's, hold on. I'm still mocking you. Don't ever fucking interrupt me when I'm mocking you. Eastside Dave McDonald. Um, Dave McDonald. Uh, here he is, that fucking asshole from Ron and <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I know, but you were trying to cut off my brilliant little impromptu bit because you're fucking jumping. The, you're all goddamn jumpy. Now just relax, spider. I'm good, buddy. I'm right. good. I, I was going to explain the reason why is I always forget which name I'm going to go with on Tales from the Satellite. Because when it's Davey Mack for Davey Mack Sports Program, that makes sense. When it was the East Side Dave show, call you East Side Dave. I'm the not going to call this you. The program is Davey Max Tales from the Satellite. Yep. I should just listen to what I said 10 <laughs> seconds prior and then I've got the problem solved, don't I? <laughs> do you hear the Davey Max Sports Program? I do East Side Dave McDonald so that everyone knows East Side Dave and Davey Mac, all the same individual. But because I was always doing the Davey Mac Sports Program and that was one of our biggest, uh, that well, well is the biggest uh, uh, podcast I've ever done, recognized by the iTunes as uh, best independent sports program in the world. Um, because of that, you know, Davey Mack, right? That's where we got on the, that's where I got on the radar of Deadspin and, uh, Barstool and various websites when I bothered Chris Berman and all that type of shit. By the way, we do got to say it's a week later if you're on Patreon, but that's oh. why you got to be subscribing to patreon.com slash Eastside Dave. If you're watching these things on YouTube, understand these things were out in the universe two months ago. Okay, the whole reason why you go to patreon.com slash Eastside Dave is number one, you get Tales from the Satellite a month to two months in advance of everybody else, exclusive content, special tiered content, early access to DMSP, Yaddle Channel, Eastside Dave, it's on Wrestling Show. So you need to be subscribing to patreon.com slash Eastside Dave. But yeah, if you're on Patreon, this is a special. How do you like it? Surprise, Patreon. <laughs> How we doing today, Patreon? You weren't expecting this. This is what we do's for you. Everyone else took off sometime in August and <laughs> September. We took off zero time. And the yeah. only reason why there was three weeks in between episodes was because Bobo Daniel Carlin forgot to fucking uh, cancel the Grey Adventure thing. And then Robert forgot to fucking check if Grey Adventure was even open. But that's why we're giving you a special bonus episode. To make good. And now we're good. Yeah, we are great. And I want you fans who might have been frustrated by the Six Flags Robert part to know Bobo's not here to do the extra episode. So that's where you should put your blame. No, no, no. <laughs> it was a 50-50 split of fucking assholes. And with of zero percent on me. Zero on Dave, you. to be clear. 50 to you, 50 to Bobo. But listen, I'm excited. This was actually Robert's idea. I'll give Robert credit on this. He said, "Do you want to do a show on Wednesday? I uh, 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 on Monday on the Davy Mac Sports Program." I said, "I'm always ready to do a show, Daddy. Absolutely. I'm always ready to fucking rock and roll, baby." So I says, "Yes," but I says, "Do you even have an episode prepared?" Because you know, it's a sharing thing. Sometimes Robert's got an idea for a topic. Sometimes I've got an idea for a topic. Sometimes you, by the, the way, audience, yeah, yeah, have an idea for a topic, and we goes, "Oh, that's good." If you have an idea for a topic. Or want to, uh, uh, you know, get involved in the Davy Max Q and A for the five dollar tier members? Um, it's Davy Max Shows at Gmail dot com. Send us your uh, emails, Davy Max Shows at Gmail dot com. But I'm the fun thing about today is it's a mystery topic. I don't know what it, what today's uh, topic is about. Well, you gave me credit for coming up with the idea of the episode, but one of the reasons why we were able to do it is last week when you were helping me come up with topic ideas, you sent me several, so I did choose one of those. 
that you had sent me as an option. And we are going to do Dave Reed's Earl's emails today. Davey Mac reads Earl's emails. Sweet. So I came up with this topic. I just didn't know it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm giving myself credit even for this. So you know yeah. what, folks? Give me all the fucking credit. Okay? <laughs> Let me get 10%, doggy. All right. You get 10% <laughs> credit. <laughs> so are my today, windows open oh yeah <laughs> would you like to go close them real quick <laughs> no go ahead actually yeah we'll just intro introduce so that. the topic today is dave gets busted reading earl's emails oh, yeah. but even more than that what's going on here is there's an underlying theme of dave trying to help earl in any way possible even if earl doesn't want it earl's struggle with love life and i'll be honest at the end of this episode i think we may have uncovered our first Un unseen mystery or you know new uh -oh. thing within the episode so i am looking forward to that but oh. we are talking about you reading earl's emails yeah may, may i just real quickly say since i just saw myself in the camera for the first time we discussed my eye incident on the davy max sports program this past uh monday september 9th go look for that episode it's in full detail but basically i gave myself a concussion for opening the freezer door too uh hard and since i am also looking at you do you have lasers on or am I, did I smoke bad weed? Oh yeah. I had little dots to jazz it up. Is, are they okay. appearing on me? Yes. Just on you. Not on the walls. Occasionally on the picture behind you. It looks like there's a blue sniper. So we, we probably should have done this in show prep, but this is on me. I do like the new angle, David. I didn't realize at first. Don't you dare give me a Ronnie B line. That is for the fucking producers. Yes, we should have done this in show, in prep, you goddamn asshole. That's your job. You, yeah. should, have, you should have told me about the blue spots I, on my face. I was trying for something <laughs> fun, Bobby. Damn it, dude. I wasn't trying to throw you under the bus. I was trying to throw me under the bus there. Like, I should have caught this in show prep and oh, told Dave to do I it. See. I wasn't giving you a Ronnie yeah, behind. You're, well, you're, you're the show to... star. No, 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 no. So that that's something that you as a Ron and Fez fan have definitely heard. That is something that Ron would say. No producers. So when you fucking say that to me, dickwad, you're thinking you're Ron Bennington and I'm fucking just regular Davey Mac. It don't work like that. I'm fucking Axl Rose and you're my goddamn boot licking fucking microphone engineer. That's all you is. My coming roadie. In, come, coming in hot there, Davey Mac. So, uh, all I could say is I know I'm not Ron Bennington because if this was the Ron and Davey Mac show, the Patreon would cost a hell of a lot more than two fifty a month. <laughs> not necessarily. Not necessarily. Why do you think that? You don't oh, think that uh, me, I, me and Ron would uh, are friend friendly to uh, the fans? I, I think there might be a tier for that, but I think if you wanted the good stuff, people yeah. would be willing to pay like a hundred dollars well, a week. Some, for that. I'm not some evil fucking capitalist, Robert. You know, I, I, in fact, if anything, I've been charging way too less or uh, for free for years and years and years. That's probably why um, I'm in uh, financial troubles <laughs> Yeah, you and, and, why, both, and, and, and why I need more money in the bank. But regardless, uh, then you shouldn't assume you shouldn't assume you of all people should not assume for anyone. You know why you have brain damage. I have brain damage. Look at your face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So today we are talking about, I see why you might be a little on edge, because we are talking about you kind of in the hot seat. No, I'm not in the hot seat. I just, no, I'm on edge because I have a concussion. I want everyone to understand I'm still suffering from post-fucking concussion injuries. The goddamn eye incident just happened. And I've been fucking, and uh, uh, last night, Robert, real quick, we did a show on Monday, mm -hmm. Davy Max Sports Program. We Great were discussing episode. the Tyreek Reek Hill police officer situation. <laughs> it was actually a debate. I was on one side. Roy was on the other. I, I'm just going to drive you to the fucking episode, folks. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, go see who's, who was on which side. And what you might was, be able to guess. And, and, and what was their uh, backup? <laughs> but, Robert, I did have a couple of uh, you know, things to say about local police officers. <laughs> last night, out of smokes, I, I, I told you I talked to you last night. And I said, yeah. I'm on a Sopranos rewatch because are, are you aware? They just released a two part documentary called David Chase and the Sopranos on HBO Max. It's sensational. Uh, each episode about an hour, 15, hour, 20. 
Does and it's all talking? about David Chase, the yeah, writer, you know, creator of the show and the show itself. And they oh, think it's great. I thought it was you chasing the Sopranos. <laughs> so it's fantastic. That inspired me. I realized I hadn't done uh, a Sopranos rewatch in a long time. I've done it before. I've probably watched the show three times. Um, but it's been four or five years. I'm going in. I'm all in. Okay. But I get to episode uh, seven last night. It was about 1.30 in the morning. And I'm still going hard. And I go, shitty, bitty, bitty, boo, boo, fucky, fucky, suck, walk. I go. That's a CTE. I'm looking at <laughs> the pack of cigarettes and I got one, Bobby. Ooh. I goes, I got to drive to 7-Eleven. Yeah. I drive to 7-Eleven. <laughs> and on my way home, I just get followed the entire time by a fucking <laughs> cop. Oh, boy. And he put his high beams on, never put sirens or pulled me over. But okay. what was the point of that? A single road that no one else is traveling on, and he puts the high beams. By the way, I wasn't indulging. I wasn't indulging in anything. This was a mm. stone cold, sober fucking, you know, I go crazy. I'm under CTE. Watch. So I haven't touched anything. No IPAs, joint skis, and nothing. The Saving CTE, that brain. The CTE is doing its work, yeah. If I hold my breath and shake my head, it doesn't. Don't do feel, that. <laughs> it sort of feels like a whippet. Yeah, really don't do that. That's not good. But it's kind so of you, fun, Bobby. That's why you don't shake a baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that it? Because yeah, I've noticed every time I shake my head real fun, it's, I get like 15 seconds of highness. Yeah, but you then, don't want to do that. But then my my head hurts, Bobby, like the elephant man. Oh no! And then I'm afraid to nap because the I, my, my head won't get up after after that. Yeah, this is the CTE talk, and the CTE <laughs> is at full display today. Did it's you not know my fault. That's what the poem is raining. It's snoring. It's about is a guy going to sleep with CTE and not waking up. It's raining. It's pouring. The old man snoring. He bumped his head. Got out. Couldn't get out of bed up in the morning. Like it's a guy who went to sleep with That's a concussion. What it and didn't wake up. Yeah, yeah. It was an old nursery rhyme to remind kids. That's like if you bump your head, dark. Don't go to sleep. See, I thought it was about the goddamn elephant man this whole time. But anyway, the point is, he puts the high beams on when I'm not doing anything, and he's on my ass. He's three, you know, three inches off my goddamn bumper. Were you doing the speed limit? Not only was I doing the speed limit before, I mean, as soon as I got in the car, mm -hmm. I hit the speed, I hit the cruise control. I hit the cruise control always on the exact number, and we have no less than two or three of those speed limit fucking douchebag electric signs where if you're going the speed limit, you get a green smile. Like a yeah. green smiley face. If you're uh, not, I don't know if they have them in other states, but they got them all over Jersey. If you're going above the speed limit, you get the red X guy. X is on his face and a frown and in, in a red circle. Yeah. I was getting screened, uh, green smileys my entire fucking time. So, and this cop who's three inches off my ass, he sees the green smileys because I have it on cruise control. So he was trying to fucking, what is it? about some of these police officers that are so desperate for an arrest. Bro, if you're so uh, fucking obsessed with some action, move to Detroit, move to Philly, move to fucking Washington, D.C., go to Baltimore. Go investigate your friend's murder in Hollywood. Yeah. Now, before I mean, we... I can say some shit. Before we bash him too much, is it possible on. that now... They do know who you are. You have been given the green light. And he was like, oh, it's Davey Mac. Dave, go. You can you can speed. Maybe that's why he was like, I know who you are. Yeah, You're no, allowed no, to no. go. So I had to call up the chief of police. And I say, look, I, I've lived here longer than any of these fucking assholes. I don't recognize one mm. of these cops. All right. So I don't know where you fucking got these guys from. Tell your fucking guys to leave me alone. For real. <laughs> Just if they see me, <laughs> just go the other, like, just ignore. I'm not a person. No, in all honesty, I'm not bothering anyone. I'm at a stage in my life where I leave everyone alone. and I want to be left alone. I want to do my shows and simply exist. Yeah, That's it. I get it. I get it. That said, it does feel like 
certain societal rules you may not want to follow, which may be the thesis of what we're talking about today, which is you reading Earl's emails. I guess there's some truth to that. But my point is a little minor rule breaking from time to time. That doesn't really hurt anybody. And, and so the response and reaction to a minor infraction should not be volcanic. And no. whether it's me with the local cops or the cop with Tyreek mm -hmm. or Earl in this situation, it's going to be an existential and philosophical question that I pose to you, the audience. Did Earl go over the top on this? I says yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, now I, I couldn't agree with you more. I see where you're coming from here before we even get into you getting to the emails though. Earl is bragging about finally acting as an executive producer. He, the first thing he did is, uh, Ron gives him credit for bringing in Jimmy Schmitz. I don't know who that is or why it Comedian, was a big... I believe. Okay. Yeah. Jimmy, 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 but I think that's a guy Ron knows. Jimmy, Jimmy, wait, Jimmy Smith. Smith, yeah. Wait. Smiths. Jimmy Smiths is the guy from fucking Star Wars. He's Bill Organa. Who's Bill Organa? Oh, my God. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Jimmy Smiths, L.A. Law. Anything from when I was born. Anything not from the 70s, dude. The fucking Star the original, the, the prequel trilogy. Oh, he was okay. in the prequel, the ones in the 2000s. He, he, he fucking adopted little Leia. He's Leia's dad. All right, okay. move on. Move I'm on. sorry, I'm Leia. sorry. So it, it seems like, so then that's why Ron's kind of rubbing it in a bit that Earl was getting to be buddy-buddy with Jimmy Smits because you probably would have wanted to get to know him because of his Star Wars and how much you love exactly. that movie and everything. Okay, he's, so that's he's Bail, he's Bail or Organa. And actually, Jimmy was an incredibly polite gentleman. And I did shake his hand. And he let me do, uh, he let me give the him the headphone treatment, unlike Henry Rollins. As soon as he sat down, I put the headphones right on his ear. He gave me, on his ears. And he looked up and gave me the most courteous, well, thank you very much. He was such a class act. I fucking love Jimmy Smith. I'm glad to hear that. It, it, it does seem that a lot of the stars you wouldn't, you think might have a big head or something like that are the most down to earth people, especially in the Star Wars franchise. I mean, you hear about Harrison Ford being that way. Um, he does that as a gimmick. I'm convinced he does the grub. No, it's genius. He hit his, he's adopted in his older years and when he's a legend is a grumpy public persona so that when you meet him in real life, if he's an asshole, you, you can be like, well, he's just being Harrison Ford. But but behind the scenes, everyone says he's a nice guy. Absolutely. My favorite story is the mama is in the papa singer who went to see Star Wars and was like, my pot dealer's in this movie? And it turns out it was Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's good shit. So you got to meet Jimmy Smith, which is cool. Uh, yeah. They they At this point, you're behind the board. Why, what, what was going on here? It was a big thing that you were removed. Like they, they were making it at, at this point. It was Daveless Thursdays is what they were attempting. Um, did you do something? What, what year? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked what year this was, Dave. I believe this was June 8th, 2006. <laughs> he knows it. He knows the fucking date for a goddamn change. Yeah, I was waiting. It took us 19 minutes to get there, but when I was like, hell yeah. Serious? Uh, I mean, yeah. When did we go from XM to Sirius? Do you have any idea about that? All right, that's for next week. I know I put, I can't. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. Right? I can find the transition. Um, There were always like, uh, like there would be a new like producer, a new intern or some other fucking asshole would say, uh, you know, Dave talks too much. Dave talks too much. And they would always come in and they would always think that they were the first ones with the idea of, well, let's start, you know, let, let's have shows without Dave in studio so that Fez will talk more. And so I was consistently over and over any new producer. They always thought this was the smartest idea. They always thought they were original with this idea. Intern, producer, assistant program director, 
whoever the fuck it was. It doesn't matter. They were you know, whether on the XM side is what I'm saying. Some suit on the serious XM <laughs> some suit. The an intern would say it. A new producer, a they drunk Irishman, like, just in town yeah. for three weeks. And, and, and I, I, I always wanted one time. Uh, just to say, I'm, I'm, I'm being. Um, the reason why I'm talking too much is because I'm being asked to do that. I'm being asked to participate, entertain, and bring fire to, and energy to the show. I'm being asked to do that, but you know, no one uh, said that, I guess, or this or that. So it's possible this was one of those uh, moments, one of those many, many annoying fucking moments. Where it's like, hey, let's put him over there. Okay, fine. Punish the guy for doing what is asked of him. But in the most Ron and Fez team brilliant way, turn the guy not being allowed to speak into the thing everybody's speaking about. Right? Like you sometimes, sometimes kind of like a tongue always. in cheek way at him. No, I mean, sometimes, not always. And I think that it was in this instance, just oh, the in, way it in, in was. Instance, good. Yeah, it was continually being played up like, oh, Dave wasn't in here. So Ron brings up That's that cool. Earl brought in Jimmy Schmitz and he was getting kind of buddy buddy with the hot talent booker at the time. And Ur Ron kind of goes, yeah, big executive producer. You know, you're working on that. And Earl goes, no, I'm working on. Book a new guest for you, Ronnie B. And. They're like, oh, come on. You don't. And he's like, ah, no, nah, it's a work thing. And then the subject changes to the hot rocker waitress they've met. She's in a rock band. And we learned that Ron, like, tried to be Earl's wingman the best as possible. Like, hey, we're from the radio. Oh, Mr. Douglas picks all the hits. You should talk to Mr. Douglas. He chooses. And like, so he asked, have you been emailing this chick who we find out her name was Jennifer, right? <laughs> okay. Do you Whatever remember? you say, I don't remember her actual name. I remember this incident, but not the lady's name. I think I wrote it down. Maybe I didn't. I believe it was Jennifer, but whatever, the rocker chick. Earl points out, like, well, we haven't met up or anything crazy, but, you know, we've been talking like this and that through email, at which point you pipe in and go, I have some info on that situation. And right away, Ron shuts it down. But again, kind of the tongue in cheek way of being like, no, Dave, you're in the hole today. Remember? You're behind that board. You're not supposed to talk. Uh -oh. And again, I mean, I could have also been in trouble for something. I don't know why I was uh, behind this thing. I, this is that that's a mis mystery to me. Well, can we talk about the idea just in general a little bit? Because I do think it comes up at the end of the show. So, like, if there was an incident, it seems like Ron and Fez, if it wasn't a major issue, would try to find a way to work out whatever retaliation, revenge on air. So it didn't have to go to the suits. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. You know, I the think best that's fair to say for, I mean, for, for the most part. Yes. I believe the, that's fair to say. And yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Your team at the end of the day, you're yeah. trying to keep your team out of trouble. I get yeah. that. But so maybe that's what their way of you. Like it's when you, a team suspends a player on their own and hopes the NCAA doesn't get involved. You're like, no, we've done an internal review. We've decided we're going to suspend the quarterback for three games. Like, you know what I mean? Almost like Dave's in the hole. We're going to make fun of him for being in the hole. That's his punishment. You don't have to take pay away. And I, I, I love that idea. You know what I mean? It almost goes back to school where it was like, oh, no, don't tell mom you hit me. I'll let you hit me twice. Yeah, I just, I like I, what I'm saying is I don't I don't remember why I'm in the hole. But, you know, maybe there were, I guess there was some kind of fucking reason. Who cares? Yeah, or it may have just been a bit for the time, too. Like, who, who, you know what I mean? You were learning the board, and it's a way to make it, oh, Dave has to learn the board. That way we can't call it. Who Ooh. knows what was going on? If it's on 2006, here. there's a possibility of that. There's a possibility of 2006. Why don't you go behind there and do some breaks, you know, in yeah. case Earl ever has a fucking catastrophic, you know, uh, brain aneurysm life on the air. And it's the, the old it's trap back there. Fucking, we got to make sure. Whole entire head explodes like Videodrome. If that fucking happens, uh, then yeah. Or was it The standard? only person I could think yeah. less likely to still be with Ron and Fez than Earl Douglas right now, because it is impressive. He, he kind of, you know, I, wait, I know he went away for a bit, but he is back with them, would be Billy Staples. Like, as far as like producers who had full on meltdowns and big blow up moments 
it's Earl and Billy Staples head and head. And the fact that Earl is still with that team is a testament to, I think, Ron's friendship and love of a guy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But he also got a, a substantial break, as you pointed out. Yeah. Did he not? And did he, not? he did. And uh, what happened to that place? What? Which place? Well, the Earl and the guy who hired Earl at the Hard Rock, where he was the ambiance manager or whatever they called it. Is that no is Hard Rock? Work. Hard Rock's gone? The Hard Rock's there, but those two no longer work for it. Oh, <laughs> like, everything Earl touches turns to shit. Oh, man. Well, I mean, he's on <laughs> Bennington's show now. Is that what you want to no. say? No, no, Bennington's great. That's my point. <laughs> like, even it would be the equivalent of Jordan playing with that J Mac guy who could just shoot threes. Remember that autistic yeah. kid who came in the yeah, game? Yeah, like yeah, Jordan yeah. just carrying him. That's what Ron's doing with Earl, I think. And it's beautiful. Ron and Pepper. There but the great guys love them all. <laughs> Earl at this point goes, Dave actually does have some info and brings you into the conversation, which is the moment where you should have realized this is a trap. No, I probably have some info. And I told that to Ron during the break. I probably said to Ron during the break, I, I broke into the computer, look at his emails, and I, I have them all. What do you, do you want me to do anything with them? That's oh. probably that that's the probably oh. what happened. Well then as a as a listener, I completely got fleeced because it seemed like Earl was aware of what you were doing and Ron had no idea. That's brilliant radio. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it was more than likely I, I wouldn't give Earl a heads up ever. I would have given Ron a heads up and I would well, have said, hey, Ron, Earl fucking that that uh, idiot Earl left his email open and I got some uh, messages. Do you want me to, uh, you know, fuck with this guy? That's 99.7 percent what happened. And would the one percent be that Earl caught you and he's this is a preemptive strike. And I'm just asking because that's how the narrative is told on air. Yeah. OK. Yeah, That's he could have not... caught me during the break because he would have come from inside the studio into the producer's booth and may have saw me, you Something, know, fucking yeah. rummaging around through his emails. So we'll, we'll get to that in one second. Before we do, we're going to take a quick commercial break right oh. here. All right, Ron Fez show. Earl's bringing the celebrities through, Mr. Jimmy Smith, huh? Yeah, this is pretty cool. I saw you and him pound around together. You put uh, Dave behind the board, and there you are. You're off playing executive producer. It's about time. <laughs> You're like a Vegas host. <laughs> Definitely about time. No, yeah. it felt weird being not in there. Right. Just like, okay, what do I do with myself now? It's weird having you in here. By the <laughs> way, that publicist is so hot. What's her story? She brought a couple of those guys by. You and her working something? You never know. You, you know, think so, really? Really? Oh, God, no. I have this. I mean, we're working on other gas. Yeah, but, but she's fantastic looking. Yes. You have a woman in your life right now, Earl? No. I know you had a date last week, right? Uh, no, actually, ago. that that kind of fell apart. Oh, it did. Yeah, she had a uh, an emer a huge emergency. Yeah, I would get that too if I had a date with you. No. <laughs> something something suddenly came no, up. No, it was, a dam broke. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was really actually very serious. What was it? Uh, Email problems. No, um... Box drop? Uh, <laughs> death in the family. Who? Uh, grandmother. Oh, come on. Everyone has grandmothers dies. You can still go out. <laughs> I could say if it was a mom or a dad, but you expect the grandparents to die. That's all part of the gimmick. You should have done the Ed Rooney bit. You bring her old bones out here, and <laughs> out. No, is this a white girl? Uh, Let me ask this. Did the grandmother die when she found out that she was going out with you? No. <laughs> when Earl pulled up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what happened in that little rocker? Remember we uh, you had that little rock star that we met at uh, PJ Clark's that day. I said, and uh, I'm like, uh, uh, she's going, oh, you guys are on the radio, and I'm trying to set her up. I'm like, well, Mr. Douglas is the one who picks the songs that run on the radio. We just play what Mr. Douglas tells us. But she and I was, was just, you know, just not into yeah. it at all, like an idiot. Yeah, that was a bad day for you. But you and her have been uh, kind of emailing back and forth and stuff, right? Yeah, she wants to come by and drop the CD off. But just trying to what is tell, that? Her, tell her wear something tight. <laughs> Preferably skimpy. Yeah, sure. Sell it. Make it all happen. So you and her, you, you're you keeping the relationship going. Yeah, we we bounced a couple of emails back and forth. Nice. All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 
Earl hanging out with us today. <laughs> this is fun. This is you having a good time? Yeah, no, it's just I love being in this room. Yeah, well, you can live in here now. <laughs> well, maybe once you get that little waitress in here and, you know, you, she brings in her CD, maybe that'll be the moment that it all clicks for you. I don't know about that. Because <laughs> then you got then you got home field advantage. Yeah, that's true. You know, I got the home ice. Exactly. Then you're gonna look like the king of XM. Yeah, I mean, I'm starting to dress the part too. What's her name? Jackie. Uh, Jackie. Yeah. She, uh, Jackie. If I have uh, some info for uh, Dave. Second. Yes. You, you got put in the hole. This is her old time. Okay. You All have right. you and by the way, you have no info. No, I I, I just know things about Earl and Jackie. Well, and no, her. well, here's no. Let me rephrase that. He's been reading once again. Been reading my email what? when I'm not in the room. That uh, I caught you stone cold yesterday. Oh no! Only what was he doing? No, because the fold. Because I usually keep my inbox open. Yeah. Because I'm in there. Because anything pops up, you know, from DC or whatever. Right. So I had to run across the street to get you that DVD. Oh yeah. So I come back and I go to check my email. Wait a minute. Let me remember what the DVD was. Oh, the DVD was Yo Soy Barrica Para Que Tu Lo Sepas. Which means, uh oh, Puerto Rican lives next door. <laughs> no. Okay, something, I don't know. <laughs> Look. So, uh, I. <laughs> no, Bronx Johnny's mad. <laughs> <laughs> so I go back in, I go back in, into the studio and I go to check email and I have, you know, I put everything in the folders and her folder was open. Where all of our all of the emails we've been going Dave, back and forth. Dave, you don't with. read other people's emails. Uh, I just on Earl's. I just have to keep tabs on him from some no, time. No, you time just, time. no, you and you've read Bronx Johnny's emails but, too. His oh, oh, are you reading his French emails? Yeah, no, all right, I you little cock blocker, you redheaded <laughs> cock blocker. Stay away from people's emails. I just Earl. Sometimes I just want to make sure that things are going on with Jackie, you know, and and I know that he's interested in her and stuff. And I like so that has nothing to do. With you, Dave. But it's just, it's funny to me, those emails, because he writes such passionate emails like, I'll, I'll definitely stop by, exclamation point. And here, you know, it's going to be uh, great Dave, to see you. Dave, Dave, Everything, you know, Dave, has a. It's none of your big business. It really is none of your business, Dave. I don't read your emails to Westside or whoever you write to. But it's none of your the, business. Yeah, his uh, email would be Westside. Sorry, I shit all over the bed. But <laughs> if the inbox is open, I kind of feel like it. it you know, it's sort of no, it isn't. no. If the no, in, it isn't. No, there's a difference. You, if my inbox is open, that's one thing. You went into a specific folder. That means you were fishing for information. And here's another thing: if Earl leaves his wallet out on the desk, it doesn't mean that you're free to go by and go through it. You have to have some kind of trust around here. I mean, sometimes Earl gets emails from, you know, XM people and yes. stuff. So I, I want to make... Those are for Earl, not for Dave. Yeah, what? you're not entitled to look at those either. If, if Wiki must... wants you in on it, he will put it in care of you. If it says Earl and Ron, then we each get it. If it says Ron, then Earl doesn't read it. If it says Earl, then Ron doesn't read it. Well, I also feel like, you know, I could just help Earl out. I could be a messenger. Why don't you do this? Earl... If you see Earl on a phone, why don't you get on the other extension and start listening in? <laughs> I mean, the emails were pleasant enough. It was a nice correspondence. It no, was. It, so, it sounded like two little lovebirds. No, it was Dave, really you're miss, but you're cute. missing the point, though. You don't read other people's mail. I don't you see don't. what you don't read other don't people's mail. mail. You do not do that. If the box is open, I no. have to. I mean, no, you don't. You that's minimize still his. It. You minimize it, and you, then you go somewhere. It's, it's, I, don't, I told you that. Before. Don't make us be at the point where if somebody gets up, they gotta go. Oh, let me turn off the computer. Because but I can't trust my Earl coworkers. needs to be pushed into these things with these dates. And I feel like if I can look at the correspondence between Earl and the girl, maybe I can, you know, give him yes, uh, advice. Yes, you banged one woman in history. You should be uh, Cyrano de Bergiac for him. You and your big fucking nose should be hanging around outside the other side of a bush. I just feel like I know how to steer Earl into this Jackie. She's so What is nice. he doing wrong, in your opinion? Well, there's too many exclamation points for one thing on the emails. They're way too bubbly, and everything is, you know, we'll be there at five o'clock. Can't wait to see you. But it's Dave, gonna be. Dave, you know, you cannot... I apologize for not what showing up. No, see, Dave, are you? Are you? Do you get the point though? It's none of your business. If I wanted to, if I needed your advice, I'd ask you for it. But what do you got, buddy? don't speak for me. You know things like, you know, we're we're gonna try and make it down to PJ Clark's, Jackie. It'll be great to see you there. 
these things, you know, it, this is, it's too over the top. You should just say, hey, you know, we're going to see you, maybe not, maybe we will, maybe we won't see you, you know, and I feel like, Earl, you should just let me read the emails because I can impart no, some of the No, I'm not going to let you read anything, Dave. All right, my BlackBerry just went off, and it just says on it, this is Frenchie. He always reads my e my mail to Johnny. You are a oh. pain in the ass. <laughs> if the inbox is up. I have to. Read. No, you don't have to do a damn thing. What is next? You're going to start snapping pictures of Earl in the bathroom stall? Let me ask you a question. You ever read my email? God, no. I will dig your I... fucking eye out with this thumb. And I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. If it says my name on it, leave it the fuck alone. No, I would never do that. If Even if I saw somehow like you had left your AOL open, I would turn off the entire computer. That's exactly what I would do. But swear to Jesus right now. I swear to and Jesus And you never Christ. read it. Never, never. Swear to Jesus. I can't say the same thing for Earl because I I almost see why Earl doesn't see this as me caring about him. I'm just I, trying to... I, I think you're busting his balls is I what think, you're doing. I think you're busting <laughs> my balls and you're being very, very nosy. That's nosy. That's beyond nosy. That's rude. Friends have to get information about each other no, in order to I give advice. No, I don't think he said anything wrong. I don't see where an explanation point is wrong. Exclamation points about everything. Sorry, I missed the what, show What are you night. holding? <laughs> what is that? You I... printed it? <laughs> oh, he is an ass and a half, Earl. <laughs> you printed out Earl's emails? I I just wanted to quote you, him exactly. You, you are a dead man. You are so... You're beyond dead. Earl must have been gone yesterday 15 minutes because he only ran across the street. I ran across the street. We talked about a couple of things, and then, we, and then I came back. If he was gone a half an hour, I'm shocked. How the hell do you not only read his mail, but print it out in a half an hour? I wanted to quote him exactly. Um, I wanted to... Dave, you're missing the point. Once again, because for some reason, between that thick red skull of yours... Dave, it is none of your business. So, Earl, I want you to know, not only is he reading your emails on the computer... He's printing them out. He's printing them so that it's there in the community printer. So it's sitting there where everybody in XM could see it. No, I I got the I got your e email. I printed it out, Earl. I stapled it and put it right in my folder. I didn't show it to anybody. You and feel like that that you're uh, protecting yeah him by just you reading. It. I I didn't show it to anybody. And I now promise. you've been reading some of it off the uh, on the air. Well, I, I you have to quote someone exactly. Dave I mean, is taking every fiber of my being right now not to choke you out right now. It and really what if is. this chick turns out to be a rock star down the road? This, now you're reading her fucking mail. No. Suddenly, if it's like reading Chrissy Hines' mail, I'll no. sell this on eBay. No, or we'll make a ton of money. No. And I told him, no. And I told this one, but it didn't even involve me. I told this about what he was doing with Johnny's email. I was like. That's none of your business. It's you were there and you saw him reading yes. Johnny's email? And I'm like, what are you doing? What was he saying when he was reading it? Was he, no, he was just bringing like, it up to you? He was reading it. I think he was trying to print it out, too. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so the, what printer, are you doing? the printer was out of paper that day. But Now, when Frenchie told me before that you're in their business, you're like... Um, she's crazy, Mr. B. She's out of her mind. I care about people. Is that Everyone cool? hates you. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. <laughs> but you can't do this kind of stuff. I just, you have to see these little things. I mean, apparently Jackie lost her wallet. And then Earl writes, sorry to hear about your wallet, exclamation point. I hope everything works out for the best. <laughs> what is, and that's. First of all, that's something a guy could say to another guy. It's not even sweet talk. It's just, who says, like, I hope everything works out for the best. He's for a wallet. For a wallet. You say that for someone going to surgery. I hope he said it to Peter Jennings, all right? <laughs> Good luck, bro. <laughs> Earl. I, 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 <laughs> I don't want to do another 30 days because I, 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 I want to break something right now. I want to break someone or something. Break right him, if anything. I just hope he knows how much privacy he's violating because Jackie, the waitress, gave you her email address. Yes. She did. If she wanted this nut to have it, she would have given it to him. Now he has someone's email address. And you realize there are privacy issues within the company. We are, yeah, and we ought to send Mikey D back through your house, you little pussy. <laughs> we stuck up for you when Mikey started rattling your door. 
You big fruit. Now you don't understand privacy. It's, I don't think it really is pri. It's sort of like the find that phrase finders keepers. And if they, if it's up there on the you screen, you cannot. All right. No, what about went, anything in his desk? No, you is went that from all our, of ours. No, no. I mean that's in his desk. But I mean it's on. This is on a public computer. If it was on Earl's computer. I might have a slight doubt of doing it, but no, if it, it was it on was, the mainframe computer that we share at XM, at that particular moment, that was my workstation, and you basically violated my. I, I got to agree. My workspace. I got to agree. Uh, we do have Frenchie uh, online right now. Frenchie is, uh, well, as he says, "Side Johnny's lady friend." That's somebody that he spends time with. And Dave is obsessed with them. Like, he's fucking Access Hollywood, and that's Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And he comes in, and last Friday, he's like this. Did you hear? And I'm like, what? <laughs> it looks like Johnny's being stood up, standing out in the rain. Frenchie hasn't showed up yet. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Hey, Frenchie, how are you, honey? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good. And I don't hate Dave. I, I like him, but I just wish he would tell the truth once in a while. Uh, about what, Frenchie? About everything. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I'm just trying to get airtime. That's why I'm calling that's when, that's I never said that. Yeah. Yeah, People are yeah. putting that into your head. I never said that. I would never say that. Oh, you never that. said that? Of so, course not. So Johnny lied? Johnny? Well, well first of all, that, that makes no sense. Johnny, did I ever say that to you? Yeah, you did. Well, that's <laughs> well, that's so sad. Hey, Perry Mason, <laughs> you. Yeah. I, I don't think that even really happened. Uh, it, no further know, questions. You, you never told Ronnie that I was hanging out with Johnny when I wasn't even hanging out with him. No, I said that you guys were planning to meet on a Friday for for dinner. No, let me. No, you didn't. You said the fucking weekend together. We're a hotel room. And, well, after the dinner. <laughs> but I'm like this. Dave, what has this got to do with me? Why are you telling him this? I want. I, I hope these guys are happy. Both of them happy. It's none of our business, though. I just think everyone should should know. You know what our friends are up to. And well, you know everything. Yeah. Did, how many emails did you print out today? Only a couple. <laughs> now, now, Johnny, he told me some things in confidence. And right. I'm like, and my attitude was like, you know what? You know, God bless you. you right. Know? And enjoy. Like, enjoy. Enjoy life. Have fun. No, I didn't get on the phone and call you right as immediately like a freaking chirping no, bird. No, I will say this: you do not run a gossip com. There's one gossip com right now, and that's that fucking Cindy Adams lookalike East Side Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep trying to keep everyone abreast. Say, uh, I told Earl something today, but I think Earl, uh, East Side Dave overheard it, so he, it might come out on the air. <laughs> I didn't overhear anything, but could you? Tell me off the air, I promise. I uh, this time no, I'll I, keep the... I don't want you to know my phone number or my email address. <laughs> oh, I know that already. Is this getting too much into Bronx Johnny's personal business? He's on the phones right now and Frenchie's typed in his Frenchie Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> that is our nickname, Frenchie Cakes. <laughs> Oh, All right, uh, Dave, uh, uh, Earl, I will say this. You are the executive producer. I mean, this really is a corporate matter now. You cannot get into other people's shit. No, if I did that, I, I'm fired. Right. No questions asked. No, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like if I went on to, like, I don't know, if I went into your email or Fez's email. Yeah. You or Wikis or Elo's. Yeah, I mean... They, they wouldn't kick me out the oh, door. I, I would never go into Ron or Fez's email. Or no one Don could Woodley. believe you. No oh, one I could wouldn't. believe you. I wouldn't. Well, no, you guys trust me on this one. Only Earl, because I and like Johnny. To... And Donnie. <laughs> yeah, so that's two. I like to know people's business. Is that so wrong? I mean, I Where think I it's... come from, that's nosy. That's I'm <laughs> informed. That's Fez, a different word. Fez, I luckily for you, you don't get or send email. Yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> Checking right. my medical records. All right, Frenchie. Bye, guys. I love you. Bye, bye. Bye, Frenchie. All right, this is a problem, Dave. I will try to correct it. I mean, if Earl really has a problem, I, I mean, if you really have a problem with it, I won't read your emails. Anymore. Earl, tell him how you. I have a huge problem with it. Huge problem. And he's not joking. All right. I not even like emails. I mean, I won't read anything from Don or anybody. But how about just a couple occasional no, emails from Jackie? Nothing. Nothing Zero. at all. Because that keeps me really Nothing. entertained. Unless right? it says it's Dave. Unless you you are CC'd or it says two. Could you Dave. Ta could you ask Jackie to CC me on all the emails that you guys give back and forth? You're a smart ass. You are. You're a fucking wise guy. You really are. And here's the thing: no one believes you that you're taking this vow of respecting Earl's privacy. You will be doing it by show's end. 
I mean it this time. Here is uh, Jeff. Jeff, you're on Run of Fez. How are you guys doing? Hey, buddy. Um, I'm from where he grew up, not in Spring Lake, a couple towns over. I know exactly what type of kid this is. I have friends that go to CBA, graduated the same years he did. I've always supported him. Uh, for some reason, I always thought you were busting his balls too much, Ron, and that you didn't give him a break. You know what? I'm a fucking idiot. Ron, you had him pinned since the beginning. Since day he, one. He should be begging for forgiveness from from Earl. He, Why isn't he doing that? Like any sociopath, he doesn't know the difference between right and wrong. It doesn't exist for him. And red-haired land. Yeah, you can't explain to him morally, legally, whatever-wise, why what he did was something he shouldn't do. What I'd like to do is uh, throw bleach on him, but you wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> you would not be able to tell. If you care about someone, sometimes you have to do, you know, you have to go over the line. If you care about someone. I care about Earl. I have to know the look, information. Look, can I tell you something? Yeah. No one wants a red-headed glow stick to care about them. It's fucking scary for him to think that you're getting involved in his mail. And here's what worries me, Earl. What if this cocksucker starts sending her notes using your oh, that, screen that, name? That is why I'm I'm trying to really control myself and not... I'm sure he has. Any luck with the wallet? <laughs> Do not leave your wallet out around this place. I got fucking two dog chains on mine right now. Boz, you just give me five minutes for Dave. This shit will be straight enough. I'm five all minutes. for it. I'm for you giving an Ecuadorian beatdown. So he fucking uh, Ecuadorian education. That's uh, the only way he's going to understand. I don't like that idea very much. What if I unleash hands of stone and let him just fucking go at you? <laughs> no. I fucking let that little Roberto Duran start fucking peppering those eyebrows of yours. What's left of them. Ah, oh, just drives me crazy. Uh, Tony, Tony, you're on Ron and Fez. Dave, you really are breaking the law. Do you understand that? That what you're doing is not even funny. And you're lucky that Ronnie finds you to be amusing and an asset to the show from the dumbness factor that you bring. Yeah, if you were in corporate that. America, you would be fucking fired instantly with all the bullshit that you pull. Well, just, you know, the interesting all. thing is, this is a corporation. Just, just, just you a, know, we signed fucking things about not harassing the fellow employees if if earl's inbox is up on the screen and i'm simply reading it it's like seeing someone no. and printing it out and then telling everybody the story later no, with da no Dave, well maybe again. printing it out was a bad idea no get here's the big difference and, and also color coding it with earl and yellow and no, you, and oh, you're an asshole <laughs> it's all highlighted you are a fucking asshole no but the thing that really makes me mad is the inbox is up and then he specifically sought out the folder that's where even if the inbox is open, yeah, okay, that might be fair game, maybe. Right. But when you specifically seek out He's a folder... He's going through your shit. And then, like an idiot, leaving it up so when you come <laughs> home later, you find it. Oh, I just thought... Uh, you're the worst crook since Watergate. You know, I, went, I just thought of an alibi... Earl oftentimes, because he's too busy with the show, he'll have me open up his email and say, Dave, could you open up yes, this I thing? Yes, I ask you. From Wiki. Right. And so how because is it there different? there are updates to the things that, you know, Wiki wants us to plug or whatever. Well, well maybe, yeah, but I could have, if my finger accidentally slips on Jackie's email, then... You'd like your finger to slip on Jackie. <laughs> you have no sex life, so you're all curious about everybody else. You fucking lace Irish. You ever hear that term, uh, Fez? Never. It's because the Irish in the old days, they would have lace curtains so they could peek out the fucking window. <laughs> see what everybody's doing going back and forth. And that's a fucking true statement, do you, Mick? That sounds like a great idea, actually. And he, I grew up around those old ladies. They fucking want to know what everybody's doing at all times. And he's such a crybaby. If Earl, if you came in here and you had printed out an email, a personal email of his, he'd be calling the cops. I know, like you fucking did with Mikey, you pussy. You call the cops on Mikey D for showing up at your house, and then, but this is basically the same thing, getting involved in somebody's personal space. Now you're a laughing hyena about it. Well, that was Mikey D's thug, remember, that I called the cops on, not Mikey D. I could handle him coming over. It was Mikey you called on. Yeah, and his thug, and his thug, his big, huge, goomba thug that was going to rough me up and crack Citizens my head open. Citizen's arrest! Citizen's arrest! Here's what my prayer is, and I'll literally say this prayer to Jesus. I'll leave here, I'll go to St. Patrick's and light a candle. That that guy comes back to your house tonight and kills you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> really, I mean, I'm a practicing Catholic. I... 
You're a practicing snoop. Scott, you're on Ronnie Fez. Oh, uh, Ronnie. Yeah. Fucking Ralph Mouth. Fucking happy days. Seriously, Ralph Donnie Mose. This, it's like having Donnie girl. Mose go through your fucking computer. He's our Donnie uh, least. <laughs> the, give him a fucking two piece. I still got it. You never got had it. I saw Paul O was up there for a second. Are we going to do uh, stuff with him or no? Because I don't care one way or another. <laughs> Paul O is just as bad. <laughs> this is one bad team we've assembled here. No, Fucking 62 Mets I'm looking at. <laughs> Paul O will be in. They, 60 they, seconds. They, they look like Marv Thronberry. He was another redhead, I think. Yeah, you are. You're fucking marvelous Marv. <laughs> but I, I'm obligated. I'm obligated. I got to report this. Report I'm it. I'm Don't obligated. Report it. report it. Why would you report it? I offered you, like, donuts yesterday. Remember all that? those cookies and those stuff? Those were leftover from Stalker Patty's leftover food from two days ago. Oh. You are eating it, something that fell out of her fucking snatch when she was doing that fucking dildo gimmick with O&A, and you're eating it like it's nothing. They were tasty. I mean... Uh, Jim, you're on Run of Fez. Dave. Yeah, Reading Jim? people's emails? Eavesdropping? What do you think you are, the U.S. government? Seriously, you're on a terrorist alert over there? I always wanted to be a fed, you know, after I saw the X-Files. Hey, Paul Lowe. Yes. How are you, buddy? Hey, your life's a movie. How you doing? <laughs> What's happening, Paul? <laughs> he hey, boss. I want to you turn it off now, Dave? Go <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Do I got to send her all over there, seriously? No. Take you out of the fucking pilot seat? The thing wasn't firing. It was firing because you potted it up in the middle of it. You should be fired. <laughs> we are back. Back in the New York groove. What's going on, David McDonald? Oh, man. Nothing but good old-fashioned Sirius XM satellite radio days. Talking the talk. Walking the walk, Daddy. Well, we do talk the talk, and you did walk the walk because, as Earl points out, you do have info on his situation with Jackie. And the reason you have it Jackie. is because that's her you, name. That's her name, Jackie. Yeah, I checked. Um, right. Now that sounds familiar. Yep, Jennifer was wrong. Jen. Yeah. Different story. Jackie. Yeah, it's right, like though. I'm watching The Sopranos, and I was thinking, I was thinking Jennifer Melfi, and, and so I go, that can't be it. But no, Jackie, it, now I yeah, remember. I do very, remember the waitress, well. Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why you have info is, as Earl points out, you've been reading his emails. Yes. And we learned that I oh. always would, by the way, I always would see. That's the thing that he didn't understand. So I don't know why he would even get so mad because every time he went in to talk to Ron and Fez, when he left his emails open, I would look at each and every one. Now, <laughs> in the moment, the, the best argument you make comes later, like the best defense of yourself, I think. But in the moment, you say you're trying to help Earl with girls. He's terrible with girls, and you don't want him to blow this situation with Waitress Jackie. So you like to keep up and see what's going on. Now, yeah. when Ron goes, what do you mean he's blowing it with girls? What's he doing? You say a line that I have, I've heard myself before. <laughs> Earl's too detailed and uses too many exclamation points. <laughs> too many words. Yeah. I've, I hate to say it. I've seen... Earl's emails, and they're very similar to Bobby Tempero texts. That's all I'm going to say. Is it possible perhaps Earl was at a much you less friendly guy. stage? <laughs> you and Earl have no concept. You write paragraphs upon paragraphs upon paragraphs. Whether it be an email or a text, chicks don't want to see that. They don't want 50 fucking paragraphs. Who do you think you are? J F. Scott Fitzgerald? She's got to sit down there and read your great American novel? Just to fucking... She just wanted to see if you were, you know, drinking tonight at the bar. And Earl was the same way. Talking to her like he's a, her uncle. You know, paragraphs upon paragraphs with questions and, you know. Now, I'm not going to say you're wrong. I would say my current status single. Earl's current status single. Your current status single. So none of us have a foolproof. I'm choosing to be single right now. 
I'm disgusted are- with humanity. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think uh, I don't like any pol- any any political group. I don't I don't like them on any anybody. You know what I like? The fucking television that gets me the opportunity to rewatch The Sopranos, Pillar to Post. Mm-hmm. That's all I need. I got that from my sports, from my TV. I mean, uh, uh, for my wrestling, whatever I want. It's all right there. That that's fair. I'd pose for you the same question is that I pose to a lot of Disney adults. Do you actually enjoy that stuff, or does it just remind you of the last time you were genuinely happy? <laughs> no, I enjoy. I mean, for, I enjoy like a lot of my Star Wars stuff, but of course, the last show, The Acolyte, was a piece of shit. So bad it brought um, back the hottest growing podcast related to the Star Wars <laughs> criticism. It it, it brought it brought Yaddle Channel out of retirement because I had to comment on how fucking dreadful this show was with and it was only because it was really bad. That's it. Bad <laughs> acting, bad writing, bad storytelling, bad usage of the lore and mythology, just bad, 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 bad. And then I gave an opinion that was like, Well, you you don't you didn't like it because there was a lead black woman. I go, what the fuck are you even talking about? <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't think like that. That's not me. And that's why I've checked out of society. Like, the second there's a disagreement with any two motherfuckers in America right now, the people, the, the one side immediately points and says, well, you must be an isterophobe of some kind. And, and you're like... I thought we're just talking about peanut butter and jelly. And I was saying peanut butter is the more uh, important ingredient. You can't even have that conversation without some guy. You just don't like jelly because it was not a, 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 you fucking racist bigot pig. And I'm like, what? I can't have an opinion on the acolyte. I can't have an opinion on the WNBA. And you can't read Black Girl's emails, apparently, because you take some oh, heat for that. Talk about they it. are criticizing if, you. If, if, if you're going to have emails in a computer out, you can't have them. you you got to minimize that window. See, At least minimize it, yeah. If you minimize the window, I'm more than likely not going to get them. I'm not even going to have the ambition to get them. When I say he left his emails up, he left it on the screen. First of all, does anyone understand... When you're in that booth, that's my phone. I I apologize. No, I thought it might have been mine. Everything cool on your end? I don't know. Some fucking Nigerian prince says if I fucking email him now, I'm going to get 50 Gs. I'm thinking about it. I mean, what's he going to scam from you? (laughs) (laughs) I I think I'm going to do it this time. (laughs) Yeah, maybe you are a Nigerian king. Yeah, he's not going to get fucking. What what is he going to get? Two cents out of me? Anyway, Good luck, buddy. I also don't want to be Dave McDonald right now financially. <laughs> but um, you know, it, it, but if the, the the producer's booth is set up for the fact that there's a computer screen where Earl would sit, and there's a microphone right there, right there in front of it, and if I see the goddamn lovey dovey, stupid ass Charles Dickens esque goddamn too many words emails from Earl that look kind of funny and the microphone what am I supposed to do not hit the microphone and say I found these emails also don't have your personal email on the community work computer like you know what I mean and all kidding aside like if you don't send those personal messages from the community station you don't have a problem I mean Technically, what Robert is saying is true in that was he doing work or was he doing electronic kissy, kissy, tongue face, dicky, dicky, boom, boom. And that's the, what he was doing. He was he was doing romance shit, which should have been, been done off the clock, not on it. Also, like the audience at home may not know this, the computer that's attached for the on air stuff you don't want a ton of shit on because it slows it down. It can cause problems. It can cause inability to do your job. So you specifically don't save things like personal emails on, you know what I mean? Cause it just takes up space. Oh, he was the window, so, but he, he also was the windows King. He would have at least 175 windows up. <laughs> and then, so if Ron wanted him to play a song, he'd be like, it's buffering Ron. I don't know what the <laughs> deal is. And I consistently now, oftentimes I was in the studio with Ron Fest. 
But in the few frustrating times where I was back behind the glass and observing Earl, I would say it's because you have 170 goddamn fucking windows up that it, that's why everything is slow. You understand the, the concept of computers? <laughs> now, I mean, this is like 2006, as you just pointed out. This ain't yeah. 2024. Mm -mm. Like, and even 2024, if you have too many goddamn fucking windows open, you know, there's going to be some slower shit. But in 2006, King, yeah, you can't do shit. Fucking so. scientists in NASA had to make sure they didn't have too many windows open on their computers. That's why the fucking Challenger blew All up. 13. Too, many, too many goddamn windows were open. They, yeah. they, they, they found that out. I saw a Netflix documentary on it. Hmm. I think I saw the I same didn't, one. I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched the trailer. But from the trailer, I thought it's probably linked to the fucking windows. Too many windows were open. It makes sense to me. Now, behind the scenes, you giving me this information makes perfect sense. It's very logical. This is not what you presented on air, obviously, because this wouldn't be great radio. Right? So you go, no, I'm trying to help Earl with girls. We all have seen how bad he is, how much he drops the ball. And then they go, you're just helping Earl. You don't care about being in other people's business or anything like that. And you go, yep, just trying to help Earl. And uh, <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Natural funny. board heel. Natural board heel. And it draws you in right away. And it, it is a logical point. At this, at this point, the audience has seen Earl fail with girls time and time and time again. This is pre-Lily era, too. But, like. Even through the years, they've seen him drop the ball all the way back to ice cream chick, you know, on the pre Dave days. So, like, they know that. So, the, part of the audience is kind of like, all right, I see where Dave's coming from, only for Frenchie to call in. And RIP Frenchie, but she reveals not only does Dave read Earl's emails, he reads her email to Johnny all the time. <laughs> I read her emails? To Johnny, at this point, Johnny and uh, Frenchie were a bit of a thing. I don't even remember Johnny. I remember Mafia Life Chris This was Frenchie. This is Bronx Johnny's era with uh, Frenchie. Oh, and it may wow. have actually not been a long fling due to yeah. uh, some some meddling by, by you. <laughs> I think she was tired of being on air. But do you remember that at all? No. Like spying on Frenchie here? and Johnny? So Frenchie reveals that you're reading the email she and Johnny are sending back and forth. Wait a uh, second. So Johnny, Bronx Johnny is what? You, you, you got to be specific. Too many Johnnies. Bronx, Bronx Johnny. Johnny. What we're Bronx about. Johnny, yes. Hey, we just talked about Hard Rock Johnny five seconds ago. All right, be specific, please. My brain is scattered. I have CTE. Even with CTE, you so should Bronx know. Bronx Johnny that and Hard make, Rock, not a thing. It, it would make <laughs> sense that Bronx Johnny may have also used that computer to send an email. Yeah, that's true. And you, uh, like I said, you would read their emails. She takes it a step further, and we find out that you actually printed out Earl's emails. Hold on. When did I read Frenchie's emails? She points out that you've also printed out her emails to Johnny, and we find out that you actually have the log there. But she says you were reading the emails, that you're obsessed with her relationship. When, when did I read Frenchie's emails on the air between her and Johnny? It wasn't on the air. Oh, it was the fact that you're I'm you sorry. Drumming. Rest in peace is what you're saying, but, but you know. <laughs> I wouldn't but, do that. But I'm not a fucking crazy person. Okay? I do. Sh I'm performative. All right? I know how to work. And I was doing that for, I would do it for the air. So I'm sorry. And I'm not I, trying to be disrespectful with the with a past person, but no. If I if I don't read it on the air, then this actually sounds like a little paranoia talk to me. So bef before we break down the Frenchie call, it does end with Ron giving you a bit of a pass by pointing out that you run a gossip column. And so part of this is you kind of doing your research to get that info. But Frenchie says that you would point out that she was meeting Ron for or she was meeting jo Bronx Johnny for a date on a Friday or perhaps to spend a weekend at a hotel together. And that Ron knew that behind the scenes because you read the emails and things like that. So there are some facts to back up her claim that you may have 
for the air, but not just literally reading the I mean, emails. If, if, that if I sense. did a segment on board gossip about Bronx Johnny and Frenchie, yes, that would make sense. And I, then if I use the email for board gossip, then she has a point. But if I didn't use it for board Gaza, you know, because I don't remember just cold reading the her, anything from between her and Johnny on I'm the sure, air. I'm sure it was for board gossip. Oh. I, 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 I'm not saying it was just for Dave's yeah. wild imagination, but <laughs> she goes, you're obsessed. You, I'm not obsessed. I'm just trying to take care of my buddy, Johnny. And she goes, oh, you don't care about me. You didn't say I'm just dating Johnny for the airtime. And doing things to get airtime. And you go, I didn't say that, would I, Johnny? And Bronx Johnny goes, yes, you did. <laughs> and just throws you right under the bus. <laughs> uh, first of all, she is deceased. And I want to make it clear. I can't believe I would say that. Now, did I not tell everyone here, especially when you listen to this show, You've been listening to it now for 31 goddamn episodes. This is a show where it's a heel's perspective of what went on. Somebody's got to be the fucking bad guy. And that's fucking hysterical if I said any of that shit. It's also hilarious that without missing a beat, Johnny just throws you under the bus right a fucking way. I didn't mean it. I'm of course fucking not. around. Yeah. Jeez. Also if, if at the time, you, you're just taking care of the new guy. You're looking out for him, man. Like, you know, let me make sure this girl actually has the best interest for my new friend at heart. That's all. You're just being a pal. I get it, buddy. I get it. Yeah. However, it comes out through, <laughs> through this phone call that not only did you read Earl's emails, but you have printed them out. And a highlight color coded them <laughs> so that Earl's in yellow and that Jackie's in pink. Okay. <laughs> like I'm a fucking NFL offensive coordinator. Yeah, I got a fucking, fucking Mike McDaniels of the board. <laughs> <laughs> fucking the, the run plays are in yellow and the pass plays are in green. All right, look. First of all, I printed out the emails so that if I was going to quote the emails, I couldn't have Earl Douglas disputing what I have to say because I might be a heel, but I'm the world's most honest heel. I ain't going to make up a whole entire fictitious email. I'm going to, I'm going to read you what he wrote as for the color coordinated highlighted sections. That's just me being a producer. That's just me being organized and hilarious. Because it comes out that you have a, a color-coded version of Earl's email. And to this day, you and I are still laughing at that idea. It's I hilarious. absolutely will fucking Bill Belichick my uh, goddamn, uh, re, you know, my my game plan 100% absolutely. when uh, there's a uh, there's a game at a foot. A foot. A foot. A foot. Not at a foot. Not a yard. Not at a fucking foot. <laughs> So you printed Earl's emails, to which Fez goes, so not only did he read your emails, Earl, he printed them on the company printer and just left them there for anybody who wanted to, to take a gander. And you quickly point out that, no, you ran and got it right away, yeah. of course. Yeah, you wouldn't let it sitting there. And because Earl I wouldn't want of, Earl. I wouldn't want Earl to get it. Well, Earl would probably print something stupid, and then, and then he'd see his goddamn emails there. So, no, I was going to, boom, get those emails quickly. And through this was where we learned how it all went down. Because the day prior, Earl had to run across the street for 15 minutes between shows, I believe. Mm. And in doing so, you had gone on, opened up the email. We learned from Earl, his emails from Jackie didn't just go to the inbox. So it wouldn't have just been on the main email there. It was in a folder specifically for her. Yeah, and so then the, you had Jackie to go folder. to the Jackie folder. I mean, come on. The jokes write themselves there. Yeah. I mean, I hope nobody ever goes to my Jackie folder. <laughs> but I've got a lot of ladies in my jacking folder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All legal adults, to be clear. Yeah, but of course. many girls. Yeah. Uh, that said, so you go in, you print it. But the fatal flaw you made was you left the computer open to the Jackie folder, which Earl knew he wouldn't do. And that's how you get busted. 
Yeah, I guess this I guess. is why Earl knew that you were about to ambush, and that's why I think it was a preemptive strike. Like it, Ron may have been aware of what was going on, but I think Earl in his head saw the writing on the wall and kind of jumped in and was like, "No, he did because he read my emails before you could be the one to reveal how embarrassing the emails were." It's almost kind of like he shaped the narrative against you, and I don't think it was on purpose, but like he turned the heel thing before you could do the gotcha with the emails. Yeah, he probably did. He 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 probably you're you're right. He probably was doing a bit of a preemptive strike right there, sort of unnecessary. Because I think that the guy who snuck in uh, to your private emails, yeah. <laughs> printed them out, highlighted them. Like, I think that person more than likely will be exposed for the majority of the audience as the villain. So I'm not and sure you need a preemptive strike. You then, then if you let the villain strike first, then you are the sympathetic person. This is just wrestling booking, but all right, that's fine. Yeah, and... Uh, it- it's I mean, the bad guy is the one who's supposed to be sneaking up on the good guy and put the boots to him. That gets the good guy some sympathy, and then the good guy figures a way to make a comeback. So that would be – it would have been better if I had fucking gone out there and horrified Earl. Who knows? We probably could have had another choking strangulation situation on our hands. Like, we could have had another crazy-ass physical reaction, which would have been great. So, and you could have – you could kind of see evidence of this because – like when callers start to call in later, it's split kind of 50 50 where half the people are like, yeah, Earl sucks with girls. I think Dave was doing him a favor. And the other half are like, how dare you read an email now at this point, See, if he does, had let me go first. He would have gotten, have yeah, those, those numbers would have been way higher in his corner. Wait, he, in, it's an odd thing with Earl, you know, like a few months ago, he, I got mad at him because he, I love doing bits with Earl. But any time yeah. he has a bid or he wants to do something, he he never trusts me. When I'm probably the most trustworthy person on the planet Earth. I would agree with that. Yeah. I think it's a testament to how good you are as a character on screen that people don't realize that. Not on screen on radio, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I think you've done such a good job of shaping the persona of that that people don't realize there's a real human behind the scenes i mean if he just gives me a heads up it's almost kind of like the han solo situation where the pers- public persona is this angry heel but behind the scenes he's a caring guy so when people meet they're like oh my god this yeah the man. harrison ford yeah what did i, I say it. you said you called him han solo like he's okay. fucking just driving around every day with a goddamn wookie next to him i mean he's like 90 he probably is at this come point. come on man He's like 82. Okay. All right. How old was that guy you said not gone too soon? (laughs) I don't know. Uh, That was a while back. (laughs) But so Fez brings up the idea that it's a potential corporate issue. And I think this is him trying to do what we were just talking about. Is this was supposed to be a thing where Earl got all the sympathy and now everybody's going to be on your side because he's acting kind of like a girl about it. So Fez goes, you know, this might be a potential corporate issue. And a caller brings it up and was like, yeah, that's a private company. You could get fired for it. So <laughs> it does start to work with the ball a little bit. And then you you kind of snap it. Right, first, first of all, that, that, that sounds like a whole lot of bullshit. A whole oh, lot yeah. of bullshit. How many people have had John Gruden got kicked out of the NFL because of emails that they found out and read? Or what about that chick who was on ESPN who had the basketball show? I forget her name. She redheaded uh, lady. And uh, she's literally on her set talking about she doesn't want to be replaced by somebody else. And they secretly, because she's on the set of the basketball show, they recorded her oh, and then wow. released that footage. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. Uh, that's a whole lot of bullshit. No, if you leave your email up, I don't think there's anything illegal with any. I hate to say it. There's actually probably nothing illegal with someone reading it. Sorry. What no. am I supposed to do? What? My, my, am I supposed to be blind? If, if the you, microphone, you, if I'm in the in, in the glass, here's the microphone, right? His computer is right there, right where the screen is. So I'm looking at it. So it's in front of my face. So, I, yeah. And you know what's crazy is 20 minutes into getting busted for reading Earl's email, he came up with the same alibi. The issue was it was 20 minutes later after you'd already said the thing. I was just trying to help him with girls. And then what did you sneeze and hit control P by accident? Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that was then for proof once I was going to reveal the information in those emails. And if they needed sources, I would pr provide the emails themselves as proof, as evidence. It's all it was. It was a little bit backup. Uh, and I get that. And you do kind of go, you know, everything we do is for air. Like, it, there is no real, like, super privacy. If somebody had asked you to keep something private, you would, obviously, like we just talked about. I do but all the time. Otherwise, it's kind of fair game. And you like to blur the line of. That's Hold on. But, I mean, that is the other thing about me. Like, I've, people have told me secrets or, or I know shit about people that I've held on to forever. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to be that way. I've revealed this multiple times, but I had a breakdown in front of you and nobody knew. Like, you couldn't go back now and forever. find the episode and see where it happened because you're like, nope, this is just us being boy. Like, I am a human being. Yeah I, yeah, I, I just have an intense uh, um, um, desire to perform entertain mix it up a little sometimes you yeah, know of course who doesn't but Jeez. as we pointed out earl kind of dropped the ball and letting you set this up properly so you're kind of getting all the lines i'm sure you had not prepared but like the logic you were going to take into the argument like as you presented it the rom would probably be i see these emails pop up and they're this lovey-dovey bullshit so i go see you know what i mean i'm sure you had the steps in your head eh, you not didn't really. get a chance to I, right, I, well. I don't I don't overthink like that. I had the emails was going to read the emails. Now everything else is me scrambling. That's just my point. Yeah. Being yeah. Heelish. But I didn't have anything planned in my head, like reasons and stuff. OK, well, Fez brings is, is helping you to spin the heel thing, whether it's because he's actually thinks it's bad. You read Earl's emails or if he's just trying to, you know, work the audience a bit. He points out the fact that maybe Earl should just call Mikey D and his thug to come rough you up because you had prior to this like a few weeks prior called the cops on them because they came <laughs> to your apartment so you know he's just really working the whole thing and he goes and you called the cops on them what if earl called the cops on you right now and you know he's just working like you said trying to kind of whip the audience against you and then paulo calls in and we're hello gonna... your life's a movie paulo here <laughs> well it is funny you, you gave earl a hard time because you play that in the middle of him is calling and it's potted up halfway through in the middle and you're saying it took forever to pop. And then Fez goes, no, it didn't. Cause you potted it halfway through you moron. And it was just <laughs> such a mean cutting line, Ouch! <laughs> but Ow. we are going to listen to some audio right now. And we'll be back right after this quick commercial. And by yeah. commercial, I mean us listening to audio that is Hold not on. Commercial. Time out. no, 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 <laughs> we're not going to go to break. I've never heard someone who cuts to commercial before where there's no commercials. So just so you know, you're getting more audio. Now we're going to get to the actual original vintage audio. I don't know why. So I've scolded him. And I said, stop saying we're going to go to commercial. Because it's not commercial. It's more content. And we're going to go to more content. Never in the history of the fucking planet has it ever been good to say we're going to commercial if you're, in fact, not going to commercial, we're giving more content. We're giving the original audio. So you must figure a better way to transition into giving the original Ron and Fez audio without saying we're going to commercial <laughs> since we're not going to commercial. We're going to go to some original Ron and Fez audio, <laughs> and we'll be right back after this. Paul, are you live some movie? Yeah, she likes the movie. On, on my end, I got to screw up too. Unfortunately, my, I'm, I'm on my cell phone because they disconnected my phone accidentally. Sure, and they did for not paying the bills. Accidentally, well, I, they lost the bill. I mean, I'm screaming and cursing out at the the phone people, and then after I get off the phone and after screaming, uh, she says, "Oh yeah, I have a bag of bills in the in the closet somewhere." Oh, you crazy bitch! <laughs> She thought yeah. it was a pill. She tried to swallow it. She got Bill and Pill mixed up. Well, they actually, uh, pills do come to her house every day. They're mailed to her. All right, Paulo, is there any movies to talk about this weekend? Yeah, you got Cars, you know, Pixar, you know. And Cars, that's the Gary Newman salute. Has Finally, they've turned a no. uh, new wave song into a... Uh, into a film. No, they have mostly Southern rock. No new 80s new wave. That's going to be, the Cars movie is going to be a big one, huh? Well, 
I mean, I've I've never been a fan of John Lasseter, the director of uh, who did Toy Story and all these. How you can know, you tell the got, difference who directs a cartoon? <laughs> well, because there's a big difference. For instance, uh, The Incredibles was done by Brad Bird, and he did an amazing job last year. And, and, to me, it looks exactly. They all look the same. Toy Story, well, Incredibles. Uh, Cinderella, it's the same <laughs> fucking thing no, well, over and over. The Flintstones, <laughs> I just keep seeing a cartoon. I well, don't I mean, understand how you guys go to these things without a kid and sit there. I, I cannot, you. I'm saying this to the whole country right now. Why does somebody go to an 11 o'clock movie and it's a cartoon? It is beyond me. Something is wrong with you if you're doing this. Okay, but they make Pixar as if it's the ultimate, the greatest. And and frankly, John Lasseter has never done a good job. Toy Story, Fighting Nemo, I've never been happy with him. And These were gigantic the movies, though. Yeah, I understand. I understand that because they worshipped him because there was such there was such a great technology that came out with the first Toy Story. They figure he's the pinnacle, and now he's taken over Disney, and so his ego is completely out of control. And now he's putting out this movie where you have to look at cars. And to me, all cars look alike. I mean, none of these faces, all the talking cars. It's the whole world of talking cars. They all. There's no emotions to do. Here's what I don't understand. Why would a car go around without people in it? That there's no people. Cars are talking. Why would they have seats and a steering wheel? What happened in this world? There world? are no people. There's just cars with little eyes in the windshield, and that makes no sense at all. Why the eyes are in the windshield? The, the whole thing. What this, doesn't it, make sense is that adults watch these films, and they do. And it, yeah, I'll and check and this one out. This will be the number one film of the uh, weekend. And I For picked sure. it as the number one film of the summer because I honestly feel like people are getting dumber every second. Well, I, I'm not pretty sure it's one of the grossing films because it really is hard to emo emotionally become emotionally invested in the cause uh, performance. I can't. I can't grasp what they're trying to say to cars. It just doesn't read. I mean, it's not getting through to me. So, I mean, Omen did very well yesterday on its Tuesday opening, so it might carry through for the week, too, you what, know. What, the Omen? Yeah, it did, it did like over $12 million on one day. Now, the, the, Fezzi, uh, this was the biggest Tuesday of all time. And basically what they did was this. They took the old script... They, at the last second, somebody went like nine months ago, hey, do you realize that we have a 666 coming up? What can we put out that day? Well, we own the rights to the omen. Let's do a new omen. They didn't even have time to rewrite the script. So they just took the old script, reshot it, a very big marketing plan, and it works out. It makes $12 million on the first day. Ah, big win for Satan. Now, I went to the screening to see it because we had the director do our show. And... I uh, it started and I go like this. Excuse me, there's something wrong with the film. Someone is shoving shit through a projector <laughs> and it's shining up here. And they're like, "No, no, no, no. That's the film. That's not shit. That's the film we've made." Then what do I smell? Oh, it was fucking it was just the longest 2 hours of my life. Did the audience turn on him during the Q&A? The yeah, they had a Q&A with the director that was in here. They turned on him because at the beginning of the film he shows as one of the signs the, the tower's falling. And, you know, you're in New York. Somebody's going to have some connection with that. Some guy fucking went off on him during a Q&A, started calling him names. And I believe called him fat, which <laughs> I thought crossed the line, personally. Uh, well, but, he's learning. He's learning yet. He's got to make a few more films. Well, I, he'll, I guess he'll get the opportunity. Now, actually, it was well shot and everything, but it was really just, uh, you know, it was just done for the purpose of getting people in the seats, and since it did work out, I guess he's a hero. Yeah, and so since this gimmick thing pays off for him, for the studio, this is the stuff we can expect more and more of, more of these gimmick stuff. More and more? What are you talking about? We've been into it for like 30 <laughs> years. Yeah, and and actually, he was actually talking about it in an interview. He said, you know, I, I realize that the horror... Genre hasn't been along that uh, long now for us to be regurgitating it already. But you know, I was given the chance. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, to me, you can't. It's a young guy. Fuck it. You know, take your shot. Do do the job. What does he care? I guess. I mean, Rob Zombie is going to make a Halloween movie, so I mean, you know, everybody's jumping in. You, you know, don't start attacking Rob Zombie. I'm not. I'm saying it's a good. It's a. It's a way to make money. What do you think I'm going to be doing? I'm going to jump into it too. What do I care? Oh, that's right. Uh, your film, uh, Gape, which yeah. is... Gape? Yeah. 
to Gap. Oh, Gap. We also, now, this is the story of a pants store that <laughs> no. is somehow haunted? No, it's not. It's, it's, it's going to be a... I uh, want my bloody pants. It's going to be a, a great, very low budget. We are having a lot of personal problems. A lot of people are, are working very hard. It's, I'm, I'm almost getting swept up in it now myself. I'm, so I'm actually I'm, talking to people like, I can't wait to f see the film. And I'm like, you honestly <laughs> believe this is going to be done? But if you get this done, Polo, we yes. will have a premiere for you. We'll okay. find a theater in New York City. We'll set it out. We'll do a premiere. And we'll invite some of our uh, buddies from Troma and places like that and see if we well, can't put me. you over. Uh, everybody, uh, are, uh, everybody is working. <laughs> but that night, I want my $1 million check. That'll be part of the ceremony. Well, you know, what am I waiting for? I might as well start suing them now. Why wait <laughs> until he disappoints me? Get the litigation going. So, Paul, are you going to... I think we lost them. Paul? Yeah, we lost him mm. on his stupid cell phone. Try him back, because he's too stupid to keep his phone turned on. The wife thought the cell phone was a Percocet and tried to down that. Seriously, as bad as we bust his balls, nothing is worse than his life. No matter how angry you can get at Polo, he's being punished by God way more than we ever could. And it's been going on for years. He's probably coming up like on his 25th wedding anniversary or something with this mess. Or something, that's true. It definitely is happening. All right, we got him back, Johnny? Hey, Polo. I plugged it back in the, in the wall. Sure, sure you did. You yeah, have no wall. <laughs> have a wall. Any, anyway, there's, there's a lot of people working very hard, and I'm very proud of them all. And, and uh, there are a few personal problems. A lot of people. Son, another person died this week, so it's a lot. Who of, died this week? Of, uh, someone's niece, and another one's having family problems with the mother. So this, there's already mm -hmm. like, this it's is a cursed movie. Yeah, it's almost like a cursed movie. Yeah, it is because we've had two deaths uh, <laughs> since this started. <laughs> It's like uh, well, this yeah. will be great for panel when you do the Tonight Show. This is going to be perfect for the banter with you and Jay. And we haven't even killed anyone yet. But I, I mean, you know, uh, oh no. Paul, send me the hundred thousand right now, <laughs> or else I'm going to off this to two mil. It's up to you. As I say, once we make ten million, uh, there's no. Uh, once at least everybody's. Bro, I'm I want work. first dollar for this. I want it's, as the dollar comes in, I want it going directly into my wallet. As I say, I, I'm leaving. My my backers are involved, and uh, you know, they, we, I've actually did discuss this with them. Though seriously, I did discuss my this mill. With, yes, I really did. Seriously, I want first it. dollar on it. You wouldn't have met any of these people. All right, let's talk I, about real mo movies. I, Anything I, else I, out this week besides yeah, the new cars? Yeah, the Prairie Home Companion, which is a Robert Altman, Garrison Keller, Kelly Oak thing. I mean, if you don't know either one of those names, you'd have no business seeing this film. I mean, it's got. Did you see Ryan. the film? Yes, sir. It's got Meryl Streep and. Uh, 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 you know, it's, it's got Kevin Klein. It's got a huge cast, and you know, actors love uh, Robert Altman. He's eighty-one now, and you know, if you don't, if you don't know who he is, did you I, like I the film? I, you know, it's it's a vanity production. If you like, uh, uh, you know, Garrison Keller's and Keller NPR stuff. I, yeah, hold sure. on, let me check with Earl. Earl, are we going to get any of these people on the f show? We're still working on it. Uh, tell me if we're not, and then I can give my review. <laughs> I want to give my review, but I don't want to face these people after we do. I will say this. Meryl Streep is incredible no matter what she does. She was terrific. Kevin Klein, uh, I think he may be in a different movie than everybody else. And I'll leave it at that. Hopefully we'll get... If somebody from the film does, either us or Owen A., I'm not going to say a word about it. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, fans of, uh, of Robert Altman, they like his movies. I mean, fans of Garrison Kelly, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll understand what's going on there. It's basically a radio show that's trying to be shut down by a big corporate type and all that sort of thing. Lindsay Lohan in here doing something. She's a good actress. If she would just get off that stuff that she's on, whatever it is, you know, I think she would really be... I only uh, like her when she's high. I can't stand anything else she does except for when she's high and needy. That's when I like her best. Because I really do think she's a talented actress, if so she would just... All right, I'm know. going to give a secret review of this film. Don't go! Don't see it! Uh, you okay? No, I'm fine. <laughs> you might as well just don't even try to book anybody at all. Try to get <laughs> Streep at another time. But I do think she's fantastic. 
And I heard uh, Lily Tomlin's really good in this film. She's too. wonderful too. I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I, if you book them, I'll try not to discuss the film. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got Tommy Lee Jones, you got Woody Harrelson. I mean, it's just, a, it's just a way for actors to show up and hang out together. All right, was the Virginia Madsen thing the worst thing you've seen in film history? Yeah, I don't know. What you know, she's a great actor. She's got had her. Is she? He, she, she's bad in this movie. I mean, you know, I don't understand that either. Maybe she just needs direction because, you know, I mean, Robert Elman is apparently the kind of guy, you go to him for a direction, he says, you're getting paid. You know, do whatever you're, you're gonna, you usually do. Yeah, he just lets them My have- direction to her would be leave. <laughs> Save the film and leave. I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't really even, and I love her brother, but I didn't like her in that Sideways movie. I didn't get that whole gimmick with her. All right, I'm alone here. I'm going to just keep on talking. I'm not going to... Everyone just went away on me. <laughs> you didn't like Sideways, but I mean, she... I, very... I thought Sideways was okay, but I didn't care for her character. And it, it, she was, to me, the heart of the film to a certain extent because she... I, she... I liked her when she was younger and neuter. That's where I thought she was at her best. Yeah, well, neuter. Like... I want to see her in Gap. <laughs> If I can get it. As a matter of fact, I'm try- the, the basic premise is everybody's going to be in their underwear, but I have no objection to any because, action. Uh, are they in the changing room at the Gap? Is that why they're in their underwear? No. It's a but crazy I- movie. He's going to try to put the cameras in a cl- changing room there, a dressing room at the Gap, to try to film this thing. I, have, I, have, I will bend on that, though, if, if there are actresses out there who want to be in the movie and we want to do new nudes. Nude I thought room. that you've already got your actresses. No, we have tons of actresses. It's just I, I haven't pressed on anyone who's going to be in the film to do nude. So, I mean, if there's somebody who wants to do nude and, you know, comes into this thing. Well, how about I that penthouse girl that was on O&A the other day? I'm sure she'd like to come in and be naked. She won't do nude. Except for penthouse. <laughs> All right, anything else this weekend, Polo? No, nothing else this weekend. Just Sounds cars. like another That's bad good. weekend. Although this car is going to make a huge amount of money. A huge yeah, I mean, amount of money. It's for, you know, guys who like NASCAR who have to take their kids somewhere for a chance. Now, I had cars as my number one film when we did our little contest, right? Yep. You didn't even have top five. Right, yeah, I didn't include it. And then Paul didn't right. put um, I cars put over in, the hedge. Use that hedge, which is kind of stiff, right? No, it's doing well, and it has it has a lot of time to still make up. It depends how cars does. If cars doesn't do the numbers, it, it, you know, both of them can hang around for a while. But no, it's not doing the numbers that X-Men and, and uh, Da Vinci Code did, no. No. Yeah, this hedge came and went. No, it's still there. It's still there. It's made more... It's still so there. if my cartoon bombs, like your cartoon bombs, Fez might just find himself springing to an early uh, win here. But, Fez, if this thing goes to number one, you can't win it because you don't even have it in your top five. Yeah, so then I'm in trouble just with my other four, yeah. with my click pick starring Adam Sandler. I'll probably end up in trouble there. Yeah, but you never can win if the number. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're making picks at the track and you got everything but the number one, forget about it. You're lost. That's a losing card. All right, Paul. As, as, yeah, frankly, Mission Impossible should have done better too. How come it didn't? Because I guess the just cruise is over. Yeah, Cruz is over. That's the hell with him. He's done. Him and the Dixie Chicks, they're done. <laughs> Talk to you later, Polo. All right, bud. It's Ann Coulter's world. So Tom Cruise and the Dixie Chicks, <laughs> they're out. Ann Coulter will have the biggest book of all time, bigger than the Bible, released over the weekend. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Right before we started, Dave said he liked Paulo. I hope you guys enjoyed him too in that last clip we played. But I love be- Paulo. I do too. He, truly, I don't know if his was as as intentional as yours was, but very much uh, along the same lines as the guy people wanted to hate but ended up kind of rooting for. It, no matter, you know what I mean. Like he did very much the same thing, whether it was the oh, shit well. enema and who could make him laugh first, or oh, God, so we feel so I think bad. that's that's sad because I think Paulo definitely saw himself as a baby face, a good guy. Whereas I uh, acknowledge and admit that I'm a heel. Um, I think Paulo wanted to be the happy-go-lucky movie reviewer. So uh, <laughs> finally, I'm not going to use my bird magic metaphor here. I'm going to use a different. You're Kobe. You've, I, I you adopted 
the black mamba mentality. You're like, I am the bad guy and I'm going to be the best bad guy yeah, ever. I mean, and Paulo's and, LeBron. Everybody kind of hates him, but he still wants to be the lovable baby I, face. I, I, the basketball analogies at this point, you 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 need a different sport. Because to 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 compare Paulo to LeBron James makes no sense on like 45 different levels. I'm not even sure what the hell you're talking about. Uh, it makes sense on three to me. The first level being that he is a natural heel, but doesn't have the, like, isn't as respected as he could have been if he had leaned into being the heel. He's trying to be a baby face. Secondly, both Paulo and LeBron had the hairline of a 90 year old when they started doing their primes. Okay. You should have just done the hairline. Why don't you ever, as for a comedian, you have no editing process, just like your texts. Don't, I, no, this is this is what I'm saying. You're very good on stage. You know why? You have a sit up and a punchline. But when you talk sometimes, you have 9,000 different points. You just should have said the hairline thing. That was fucking, fucking great, baby. That Thank was you. great. Thank you. Next time, cut out all the bullshit. Just do hairline. Thank you. You said baby face and heel 58 times before the hairline joke that I didn't even know what the shit you were even talking about. But then the hairline thing was classic. That's classic Bobby T right there. Well, thank you. What I was doing is something factual and then setting it up. With no, 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 no factual. <laughs> you're, 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 no one wants factual from you. The third thing was they live in Miami. They want dates. They want to, they, all they want is to, for you to have the right fucking date. Yeah. Uh, June 8th, 2006. Six. Okay. Good. So anyway, we you might be asking yourself, why are we talking about Paul Lowe in the midst of an email drama between Dave and Earl? Yeah. But as I was re-listening to this episode, I thought it was kind of interesting how funny the themes in 2006 are still relevant in today's day and age. Like, it's amazing how, you know, they say history repeats itself, but like truly Ron and Fez is timeless because the themes they're talking about are 100 percent applicable today. Hmm. The big movie Paulo thinks is going to score big. And Ron actually had it as his number four movie of the summer is coming out. And that's the movie Cars. To which big Ron. Movie. Huge yeah. Movie. Yeah. In terms of box office, that was obviously a major, major hit. Right. In terms, yeah, absolutely. In terms of money. Oh, oh, for sure. It blew up big. It's one of the, yeah. that franchise's biggest hits to this day. But Ron points out he hates kids' movies. He doesn't understand why adults go see kids' cartoons and then <laughs> complain about them. And that's truly like something we have going on today where it's like, why are people complaining about what's going on in kids' shows? Why are people trying to put these themes into kids' shows? That's Just true. That, that, separate that, adult that, entertainment is, that is true. Um, Without getting too into it, I, I I was told by someone Star Wars is no longer for you when I was shitting on the Acolyte. They 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 said Star Wars is not for, for you anymore. And I go, here's what you can do. You can go suck my fucking ass and <laughs> yeah. take my middle fingers and put them in your ass while you're sucking my ass. Put my fing middle fingers in your ass all at the same time. Then suck shit out of my ass. Take my middle fingers out of your ass. Spit the shit onto my middle fingers. And then suck the shit off of the fingers like you're giving my middle fingers with shit a blowjob. That's what you could do. Because. Nobody's going to clip that out of context, by the <laughs> way. Because. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've heard in my life. You don't tell a fan base of 40 years. All of a sudden, you're not allowed to be a fan. Hello? Guess who passes that shit on to their kids and grandkids and nephews and nieces? The fucking people who supported the original trilogy of Star Wars and the prequel trilogy of Star Wars at this point. These are the people that have the chance to multiply Star Wars fans like fucking gremlins because they're now parents, grandparents, older brothers, sisters. And so they fuck. That's what I did with my kids. It's a it's a, something that you pass down. And in fact, the people who are original trilogy and prequel trilogy people who love George Lucas Star Wars. We are make we can make the fandom grow at an exponential rate. 
especially at this point. Yeah. But it's crazy because you just mentioned something like, well, Star Wars is not for you anymore. You know? And you didn't say that. Well, well, it's a kid's show or, or, well, it's for kids. It's for kids. George Lucas says he's making, yes, I know. I know what George Lucas fucking say. Let's not pretend to be stupid. Was Andor fucking made for kids? No, it wasn't. It was an adult series that felt more like an HBO Sunday night at nine o'clock series than it did. No, it's because if you do things right, you can get everyone and make billions of dollars. You can get people who are in their 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s, and teens. You can get them all. Why just want, why, why go for, we were making this movie for 18 to 24 year old soft people is the way the acolyte was kind of made for. Yeah. And it's like, well, this show sucks. Whoa, you're just saying that for this, this. No, I'm saying it because it sucks. That's all. It sucks. The content, the writing, the acting, the story. It sucks. It's not entertaining. So, yes, I agree with you. That- and it's, 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 but that is something that I would reject because it's like, if it's movies, TV, art, especially something that's been a franchise for almost 50 years, you can't have that thing as, well, this isn't for you. Right. You know, do do that with the anime. Like, they did a Star Wars anime show called Star Wars Visions. I I got no problem with that. Look, am I going to watch it? No. I checked out a few of the episodes. Some were good, some were bad. But again, that's a perfect example. No, I'm not going to fucking freak the fuck out. But when we're talking live action Star Wars, whether it's a movie or whether it's a Disney Plus series, come on, man. That's the most important shit there is. Fuck the, the cartoons at the end of the day. Fuck the video games. Fuck all the other shit. It's all about live action, movies and, and the series. And you can't dedicate $180 million to this acolyte thing and give us something that shits all over the Jedi for eight episodes. And it is depressing. It was a fucking piece of shit. But you, God, you happen to say that if you look like me. And then you must be, uh, uh, so you must be burning crosses somewhere. No, no, I'm not. I reject that philosophy too. But I also right. reject shitty storytelling, which the acolyte is. Boom. And you didn't tell him it was your thing when Anakin was acting like, you know, the typical white dude either, right? When yeah, he I mean, I'm the- not a prequel hater, but at the same time, yes, with, with the people who love the prequels who say, well, that's my trilogy, I don't go, well, fuck you, man. No, but my point is, like, they're saying it's for a different group now. It's for representing other people. But when they were doing your thing, like Anakin acting like the typical school shooter, right? Oh. He goes and kills all those kids. You didn't go, hey, that's the white people's thing. You know? No, yeah, I, I mean... Well, my point is, when did this start? When did they, when did Twilight look? They obviously wanting were wanting to cater to an audience that likes Twilight. It was weird, shitty. It felt wrong. It felt imbalanced. It didn't felt like it was executed well in any way, shape, or form. And it didn't work. And all of a sudden, it's like, well, it's not for you. So, are you saying like this person literally said Star Wars is not for me anymore? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I I was part of the fucking hundred million people that watched The Mandalorian. So now I shouldn't watch that? So now I shouldn't support The Mandalorian Grogu movie? I shouldn't support Andor? I shouldn't support all these other shows that I like that were clearly for me and, and Star Wars fans? See, they're, also- they're, the, these people who are defending the Acolyte, you could just fucking cut them to shreds because everything they say, you can present an argument like on the opposite side. Fuck off. The Mandalorian was for Star Wars fans of all ages. People in their 50s, 40s, 30s, 100%. And guess what? It's their biggest Star Wars show to date. (laughs) Wasn't the whole message of the first movie that the New Hope was a group of individuals? And I won't even say people because it was aliens and everything coming together to do what's right regardless of... Again, the fact that yes. half of them were aliens, Wookiees, some were princes, some were peasants. Like, a lot so of it's stuff. just dumb. Look at the prequel, getting... look at the prequel trilogy. Look at the Jedi Council. You'll you'll see a yeah. tremendous amount of diversity. No one screamed about it ever, ever, no. ever in the history of Star Wars. No one screamed about it. Not one person had an issue with with uh, Samuel Jackson or Yoda or Yaddle. I mean, the fact um, that they made they made a female Yoda called Yaddle. Yeah, nobody cares. Which is, hence the inspiration for Yaddle Chattel. 
Absolutely. by Star Wars podcast. But again, I mean, this is this is a this is a tangential thing, okay? What's but it is on? evident of the same issues being discussed then are being discussed now. Yeah. I like how much Ron hates how big Cars is going to be, and I kind of get the idea. Like, it's a movie about talking cars. It's probably not for the grown mind. However, it did strike a chord with me because I have a personal story related to that movie. I took. I, we've talked about this before. I worked at a camp for kids on ventilators, and there was a patient named Mason. And we'll just call him that because I couldn't think of another name. And Mason did pass away. And you're about to find out how. Oh, because no. Mason's biggest obsession in the world was the movie Cars. Oh, no. We're talking he would watch it like seven times a day. Oh, and his last summer at camp, what was it announced? Cars 2 was coming out. And my man was so excited. He was in an old folks home so he petitioned them to go see the movie they were gonna go do it and he saw the movie made it to the end and then passed away in the theater which is like a pretty cool story that that's what he wanted to live for he wanted to see wow. that movie he got to but it's also hilarious when you think he ruined the movie cars for so many kids so many kids got introduced to trauma in that moment that this grown man who like he couldn't leave his bed because he looked like a pancake died watching their movie oh my god <laughs> wow that's <laughs> insane man i just wanted a nice sunday afternoon with my kid at the theater i didn't expect explaining death to him Couldn't but here we go in a private showing <laughs> They wielded him out in, in in the fucking machine with with other folks. He was in like a chair bed oh, combo. Oh, fudge! But it was the Come whole on. like old folks home. Yeah. So. Oh damn it! Rest in peace, Mason. I'm glad you got to go out doing what you love, which well, is watching yeah. Tow Mater. Rest in peace, I guess. Um, you did try to defend that kids' movies could be enjoyable if you took enough L S D. Like I like the colors and stuff, and Ron well, said, "Cars, cars." By the way, is for actual little kids. Now, yeah. Finding Nemo or Wally, I <laughs> no, actually I, think an adult could watch that shit and and get into it. I mean, there's there's something there. I'm so glad you chose Finding Nemo because Ron does address that movie in particular, and his line is, "What the fuck do I care if the dad finds his fish? You know what I do with fish? I eat fish." That's all I care about fish for. And it made me laugh pretty hard. But these were fish with human brains and, and, and mouths and, and speaking abilities. Oh, absolutely. I just, well, part of the humor for me is in hearing Ron describe the movies. Clearly, he was forced to sit through these movies with some kids and hated it. Like, you can hear the pain in his voice and he's making comedy out of it. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> but he also points out when you go, I took some LSD. Uh, it makes it better. He goes. Yeah, I used to take LSD for, for before school, so maybe maybe that impresses you, Jersey kid folk. But for me, that's just another Tuesday. <laughs> I wasn't saying it to be cool. <laughs> Have you ever taken acid and watched cartoons? It can, it's a fun experience sometimes, and sometimes it lingers to where my friend picked me up when I was on acid after I was watching Bugs Bunny and shit, and when he picked me up. It felt like I looked outside and the trees all looked like cartoons. It looked like, you know, when sometimes Homer Simpson goes into fantasy land and he has like all these, like the trees are dancing and the birds and everyone's like, you know, all, everyone's just Singing like dancing him. around yeah. him. That uh, actual experience happened to me one time. It was because of the acid and it was because I had been watching uh, cartoons before that. Oh, dear God. I, I've, it was I've wonderful. Only... I've only ever done acid once, and it was not nearly as fun as that experience. In fact, the uh, it started when the Beatles song "Look What You're Doing," a young Beatles track that is a fantastic song that you just don't get enough. Everyone's gonna play if you're young Beatles. They're all always giving you the I want to twist hold and your shout hand. and the hold your hand. Go check out "Look What You're Doing." That song hit the radio. I looked out and the trees and the birds turned into cartoons dancing and having a good time. It was magical, wonderful experience. That does sound like a fun time. And I think the key's daylight. I did mine at night and then thought it was going to be like mushrooms where I could go to sleep two hours later. And now you're in for a ride, but no sleep, no sleep, no sleep till Brooklyn, dad. You would have thought it would have been Lucy in the sky with diamonds to set you off. No, that's too obvious. Yeah, no, I, that was look what you're look what you're doing is 
it's it, it it's got a great young Beatles sound, but it's got a nice little little guitar riff uh, at the beginning. That uh, look what you do. It is a Paul song, by the way. Of course, that's why. It it sounds a little more upbeat and peppy too. Than Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, like that it's song. Very, seems, very upbeat. That song seems geared to send you on a bad trip. Yeah, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is is what you play when you want to fucking jump out the window. Helter Skelter too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean there, there, there's some Beatles shit. You know, any of the Revolution number nine fucking shit. Do not play when you're tripping. Though it obviously was made and maybe recorded and produced by people who were tripping. Yeah. Don't do it because it's too goddamn scary. Yeah. The mistake I made is there was a cartoon about psychedelics and like how cool they were that I was like, oh, let me watch that. And no, it was written and made by people on acid. It's scary to people on acid. It's, yeah. You want to yeah. watch that sober. Yeah, but no, yeah, I, yeah. I get the message. The next thing that. Uh, they kind of talk about is how big the Omen 666 was. Do you recall this phenomenon at, at, at all? Because I remember being a freshman in high school and a girl being like, we should no. go to that and being like, I don't. So basically, as Ron points out, somebody realized, oh, shit, 666 is coming up June 6th of 2006, right? And we should remake the Omen or do the Omen sequel. Well, shit, there's not enough time to do the Omen sequel. Let's just rush and remake the original. And uh, oh. which is again another theme that happens today where people yeah. are like, let me just remake this movie and try to capture nostalgia. The original Omen's great with Gregory Peck. I love the original. Uh, that one's good. That one's scary. Hot I, take. Hot take. The original Omen is scarier than The Exorcist, than the original Exorcist. Well, I mean, the effects are certainly better and stuff too. I don't do horror. Like, I've got enough anxiety and stress in my life that I don't get a high from that. I just go, I was trying to escape my life. Now I'm back to it. <laughs> well, well, I mean, a lot of this is Paul. Are we getting back to Earl Douglas? Well, we're, we're about to. Oh. We're about to. The, the I don't reason... want to fucking talk these fucking shitty movies from 2006 anymore. But I it is my point. Well, just to finish that one up and how it ties into today in particular. Is... Yes. Ron goes, hey, Earl, are we getting anybody from that movie? And Earl goes, maybe. He goes, don't worry about it. <laughs> and points out that he went to see a preview screening of it and then had a Q&A of the movie. And halfway through, he got up and went, I think there's a problem. Someone shoved shit into this projector. <laughs> and now it's playing on screen. <laughs> they went, no, sir, that's the movie. But the Q&A got blown up because in the opening sequence where they show all the signs of bad things happening, one of the scenes the director used was footage from 9-11. <laughs> Jesus. So in the New York thing, the whole audience turned on him less yeah, than course. 10 seconds into the movie. And the only reason I thought that was relevant is because today of all days is 9-11 yeah, unless you forgot. Fuck? Yeah, that's stupid. All right, let's get to Earl. Well, we are about to get back to Earl. But before we do, we're going to break and let you guys listen to some original Ooh. Ron and Fez content. Check it out, homies. Um, he waves at me, and then I point at him. He goes, he's not. Sorry, there was a guy waving to me. I had to say goodbye. <laughs> you're looking at me. Exactly. When you don't the... wave to me. Yeah, that was bad. I, I was need you. paying attention to you, but then waving to him. I got to tell you right now, Team Watley <laughs> has lost already today. <laughs> and Halfway I through the show. have been pushing for Earl to train you, but it's turned into a bad idea. Because I can't have you distracting me while we're doing a radio program. All right. Eh, I'll get on top of things. People are going to walk past the studio. You can't just start waving to everyone you see like the Puerto Rican Day Parade has started already. <laughs> and I, and as it, he's in uh, Team Watley, right? Yes. Do you feel like you've made any headway with him at all? You know, there's sometimes where I think, okay, yeah, we're on our way. Then the show starts. <laughs> and then, it's for some reason, noon in the east... All, you know, everything goes to into a shit storm. I got this uh, from uh, Q. She says uh, she hated cars the first time when it was called Christine. You know what? <laughs> this is going to be better, though. This is a cartoon Christine that really makes the kids uh, happy. Happier ending, too? Yeah. Yeah, that Christine, that car just made that kid angrier. <laughs> I can't imagine seeing a cartoon unless you are forced to take a child somewhere. And I have. I've taken kids to those things. And just, 
I literally have moaned out loud <laughs> watching fucking cartoons. Like, and I at one time I just went, it's never going to end because they just fucking go on and on and they sing things and things are popping around and teacups are dancing with spoons. <laughs> and I'm like, why do adults like this? What do they get? Lions don't talk. Why are we watching this? The colors of like animated things are really cool, though. Like they kind of remind you of when you maybe did acid or or stuff like that. You don't need to do drugs, but they are, have psychedelic Finding Nemo and cars have very psychedelic colors to them and stuff. That's why I like to watch them. Sure, you throwing acid says somehow that makes you cool. Maybe LSD is going to impress people in Jersey. It means nothing to me. Okay, I took a hit before fucking school, so the whole thing is normal to me. I can't sit there and have uh, worry whether a fish finds his fish son and feel like I'm not wasting 20 bucks. I, you know what I do with fish? I fucking eat them. So what do I care if he finds them or not? Some great barrier reef. It's insane that adults sit there and watch this shit. Do you think he'll find Nemo? Who gives a fuck? They're both fish. They literally leave as soon as they drop their eggs. You they don't care. You got to think being fish that the same thing would happen the very next day that he got Nemo back. That again, a fisherman would come by and, and grab another fish that they know. Uh, here is uh, Don. Don, you're on a fez. I get so excited when Dave fucks up because I'm really hoping that he can open up the email from Don Wicklin that says Dave is fired. See ya. I'm going to say right now, Wicky, you should fire you for what you've done today and what you've really done since you've been in here. And all he has to do is send the email to Earl yeah. to make sure that you get it, Dave. <laughs> I won't be getting it. All right. Uh, when's the uh, NBA Finals? Is that tonight? Tonight, 9 o'clock, pregame at 8.30 ABC. What's the story with Dwayne Wade? I know he missed a couple practices. I think he had a sinus infection or something. Yeah, what is that flu. about? Sinus infection. Suffering from the flu um, when they clinched it in game six, and he's su suffering from post-flu-like symptoms. Basically means he's just tired. But is he going to be 100% tonight? Can yeah, we count on him? He's going to play tonight. Can the Kennedy family feel like... Maybe we can stop this madness. He did work out, but they said he had a handful of tissues out on the court. I think he's going to, you'll see him faking that he's like almost about to collapse like Jordan in uh, when he had the flu in Utah, like in 98. And Jordan faked? No, no, Jordan was doing the real deal. And I think you'll see Dwayne Wade try and do all that Jordan-esque, have to be carried to the sidelines every five seconds type stuff. I'm not buying on it at all. I think the guy's going to come out there. Where are we playing this game, Miami or... Or is this... Uh, Dallas. In Dallas. Same place they killed the president of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Now, we're supposed to forget about that and cheer them on to an NBA title. Not me, my friend. Neither one of these cities has an NBA title. If you ever look up in rafters, there's fucking plenty of room up there. You, you could put a blimp in their rafters and not hit a, a jersey at either one of these places. But, you know, no one ever talks about this, Pat Riley. At one point, remember, everybody act like... Oh, he's an awful person. He took over this team. It belongs to Van Gundy. And look what he's done with it. Yeah, he's he, finally taken him to the finals. Yeah, he, he retooled it, which everyone told him not to do. Right. And it paid off. He's in the finals for like first time since the, uh, the Nick days. Who is anybody to tell Pat Riley about the game of basketball? To sit down and go, Pat, what are you doing? What do you possibly know about basketball? How long ago did he take it over? Because it seems fairly quick. He's been there uh, 12 years. He ran, yeah, he ran head coaching. Uh, no, he, he was running. He was uh, general manager all these years and right. took it over this season, uh, halfway through the season. Uh, Joe, Joe, you're on running Fez. Hey, what's going on? Hey, pal. Hey, you got uh, you need you guys need to get Jimmy Smith back in there. He's really good at replacing redheaded douches. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did Jimmy ever see this documentary that he was in? <laughs> be would it would be interesting if he uh, knew something about Puerto Rico. Seems like a nice guy, though, huh? Oh, very nice guy. You and him hit it off out there? Yeah, very, very polite. Big very, guy. Very, I didn't normally, know he was that big. Yeah, normally you uh, meet actors, and they're tiny and they're thin. He's a big, thick guy. Could have played ball. Yeah. Um, I know, he, well, he played a cop for a couple of years where he kind of had to bulk up, but I didn't know he was that tall. Well, that yeah. was years ago, Earl. He could have lost that. <laughs> like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, yeah, well, That's you, gigantic for an actor. Normally they come in here and they can fit in your pocket. They're so <laughs> tiny. Just the littlest little people.
I think Jeff Goldblum is like six six. Well, why don't you call him? Maybe you and him could go out later for a fucking ice cream. I hate. What's that, that got to do with? You hear me and Earl and Fez talking about Jeff Goldblum? No, I'm just talking about tall actors. What Puerto Rican documentary is Jeff Goldblum doing? Why don't you call Shaq? See how tall he is. He was in that fucking movie where he played a robot cop or something. I couldn't even understand it. Felt like it was a cartoon. Was it steel? It was awful. <laughs> it was terrible. I walked out on the film, right? And I was watching it on cable. It was raining that night. I went out and stood outside in the rain for an hour and a half so I knew that the movie would be over before I went back inside. Uh, here's uh, Jeff. Jeff, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, buddies. Yeah. As painful as this is, i got to defend the red-headed idiot. If you'll go back and remember how painful it was listening to Earl screw up with those girls, Dave may be doing him a favor trying to prevent another Mitch Williams-type situation. That was so painful listening to Earl. All right, first of all... Anything to prevent that, I'm all about. Bro, you're, you broke my heart by bringing up Mitch Williams, <laughs> and I'm going to try to move on from that, okay? Because <laughs> I put that right up there with JFK getting killed. That was my... <laughs> Where were you when fucking Mitch Williams decides to groove the fucking plate? But no one is saying you can't be there and try to help Earl. No one is saying you can't coach Earl and be a friend. What you can't do when Earl goes over because he's doing the company's work is to go into his computer, open up his Jack K file, and start snooping around hoping to uh, see the phrase, my balls, in there somewhere so you can embarrass him. Just trying to push Earl into love. Just giving him love and companionship. Why? Why do you he care? Needs it. He needs it, I think. Earl, I'd be careful. Not only when you leave the room as he reading your emails, he may be sniffing your chair. Oh. <laughs> so just be careful. So I leave a present? <laughs> <laughs> if you must. <laughs> All right, Fluffinutter has really got his feelings hurt that I'm making fun of cartoons. <laughs> Fluffinutter uh, has dr uh, drawn a lot of the Ron and Fez cartoons. And they're fantastic. No, not them. I like them. Oh, those are good. Yeah, it's the other ones that don't have me and Fez in them that I can't stand to look at. <laughs> if it's about me and Fez, I'll sit and laugh and giggle and point. And those, I think, are uh, terrific. Uh, here's uh, Ronaldo. Ronaldo, you're on my Fez. Hey, buddy. How you doing today? I love the name, my man. All my favorite soccer players have the term Ron in them, so we're That's all waiting. That's my boy. Yeah. Now, you know, man, we had a guy up here in Chicago that went through some email files like that on an open computer. First of all, they're redheaded stupid. It's not a public computer because it's in a private company, and you can get fired for something like that. Just like being able to boil water would constitute you to bend that ugly bitch over you call a girlfriend, <laughs> stupid. Wow. Ronaldo, you may be my favorite caller. You know what? Uh, ring the cowbell. You're no. going into the prize well. closet. You're going into the prize closet. You're a lucky winner. Let's get him a DVD copy of the Boondock Saints Special Edition, which is in stores now, thanks to Fox Home Video, and that is signed by Billy Connolly. Look at that. He makes out like a bandit. He shouldn't have. Why? I, I didn't understand the boiling water thing. Well, anyone who's a chef gets to go oh. down on your chick. Oh. So remember when you told us that story about the chef? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That fucker. Whatever. What's wrong? Do we have to keep bringing up the West Side? I didn't want stuff? to. All right. The West to Side Highway, as she's known? You, uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, Pitts, don't laugh. Yeah. Why is Pitts laughing at this? Well, I mean, people... Funny. No, people aren't laughing at you. They're laughing at your relationship. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Don't, Forget it's it. not about you. But if you give that girl a cheese sandwich, you're going to get your nuts left. <laughs> All right. And that's not a, you know, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> I get your nuts left. <laughs> Jeremy, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Really miss Day Free Thursdays. You know, we did have I a Day Free Thursday. I even got him in the fucking hole over there. And I brought uh, Earl into the studio. Doesn't matter. You still hear him, though. Yeah, I know. The prick went and popped no. open a mic because he pissed Earl off. <sighs> Earl, get a knife and stab him to death. No, because I... <laughs> the, you any get jury a we knife and me? stab him to death, and I'll make sure you get your own channel. <laughs> How about this? I'll right now let Earl slap me in the face. All right, come on Completely over. Completely allowed. Gonna Go ahead, slap him, him in his fucking face, Earl. I'm not going to... Just fucking paintbrush that son of a bitch. Earl, this is the one piece of XM property you're allowed to damage. <laughs> then I'd say we're all even. He asked for it, Earl. Not you. Light him up. 
Come on. You, re you really want me to slide? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'll take Earl, it. do it. Fucking take him uh, mm -hmm. as hard as you want. I don't yeah. care. Because I'll if you don't, head. you're going to look like a pussy. Is, is it really like a comic book slap? No, man. No, I want you to just fucking paintbrush him. Slap him across his chops. Mm. He's left-handed. Go ahead, move that mic, Earl. And you're going to look like a pussy if you don't drop him to the floor. I know that. <laughs> What? You really will. I, I haven't. I don't can't even remember the last person I slapped. I punched people. Well, just um, act like he got your boots dirty or something. <laughs> just slap him with a glove, like the French slap. Yeah, no. I want you to just light him up, light him up because he asked for it, and he said, "Earl, I want you to slap my face." <sighs> All right, oh, hold on. And I want you to do it like you're swinging a batter, or right from the hips. Well, he's lucky my shoulder's stiff as a board. <laughs> D uh, give yourself some distance there. Line it all up properly. Oh! Oh, that was nothing. That hurt. That was nothing. <laughs> Earl, you can do better than that. Well, you want me to do one more? It's up to him. <laughs> Holy shit. David, Go ahead. Want... I'll do one more. <laughs> that hurt, though. <laughs> it's supposed Fuck to hurt. Oh, look, look at the fingerprints are already on Dave's <laughs> face. You know what? Because it's like hitting, it's like hitting snow. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't even hit him that hard. <laughs> E-Rock, come on in and check it out for justification. Turn around and look at the full hand on his face right there. Well, look I'm at the suing. fingers down his neck. I'll there sue this black. <laughs> what did you just say? Hey, hey, I'll hey. sue this black guy. <laughs> That's stupid. Now that really fucking stupid. slap him hard. Wow, I can't believe the way the finger have come up on him. Go ahead, give me one more. And everyone says I have big hands in You do. You got yeah. the big mitts. Oh, my. big hands! You know you're the one. <laughs> He's shaking. That fucking hurt. What? Yeah, that hurt. That, that hurt. didn't that hurt you. It did hurt a little. Oh, uh, come on, Earl, swing that stick. Wait, should I be, have a uh, do the other side of the match? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Palm him right across the mitt. Oh! oh. 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 Right, turn around that so I can watch better. the turn around so I can watch the bruise come up. There he comes. Look Stay at profile. look at it start to rise. Turn around. Let me get a look because it takes its time. Stay profile to Ronnie. Yeah. I cannot believe your skin. They're it's... always going to know who murdered you. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. It's starting to rise up. Oh, it feels like it. And I got like the black juice all over. Oh, all right. right. Fucking racist. He's intimidating me now. You can see the palm print. <laughs> Let him choke you. See how long it takes to choke you. <laughs> choke yourself. <laughs> what? Well, I can't choke him. Then it's a crime. <laughs> well, I, th I think we're even now. Break his fucking windpipe. I'm trying to give you know, him think, girl I think, tips. I think we're even, too. I'm trying to give him girl tips. And Do you feel like we're even, Earl? Maybe. <laughs> if that's the case, I want you to go back through his computer again. <laughs> You want him to kick yeah. you in the ribs? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'll let him kick me in the stomach. Oh, you're the nicest guy ever, because you could have really laid him out. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that? I'd have put you right through that goddamn wall, and I kid you not. <laughs> no, I remember once uh, when we were on NEW, they asked me to, to slap a girl's ass. I just wound up. <laughs> and just, did you make and they, her cry? She almost jumped through the ceiling. That's how high in the air yeah. she went. And she had this big handprint. <laughs> <laughs> it looked... It looked just, like Dave's face. Uh, just a big ass face with a handprint on it. <laughs> I just remember because she was as she was almost as pale as Dave, and it was just this big red. There's no such thing as almost as pale as Dave. <laughs> Pull the shirt up a little so uh, more of the um, butt is exposed. Uh, the um, under underwear, yeah. <laughs> Oh, now, Iraq's e no. pulling up the big panties to get some. Now, Iraq, e uh, look at the camera. See this? Don't get in the way of it. There you go. All right. Here we go. Oh. You, what is wrong with you? Holy what Jesus is wrong Christ! With you? Oh my God! <laughs> just assaulted her. Iran. What the f is? You I know? underestimated Iran. No, wait a minute. You don't know how to spank a girl. You don't spank a girl like that. Yeah. I completely underestimated him. I have completely turned. I'm on your side now, friend. <laughs> wow, you're did he whack sick. her? You're a sick f. Did he whack did her? Did you hear that? I I am lit up. I mean, seriously, the, the hands is still like, it, there's my skin feels like it's reverberating. Um, you can still see the, the word. Like, I don't the, think it is. No, it's not. Just yeah, next it, time, Earl, 
Try to get a thumb and an eye <laughs> while you're going across the face. Scout something out there. Like the Put old agent on. spike. <laughs> Put a ring on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back here. I well, think little Lene's hanging around, too. Wait, hold on, hold on. No, nah, I'm, not, I'm not in any hurry. No, I'm, I'm not in any hurry, bro. <laughs> There's nobody in there. I know. I'm sending them back in time. So uh, little Lene is going to come in in just a little bit. We'll be right back. It's the Run and Fez show. We are back. And just to summarize the Paul, sum up the Paulo thing, I hope you guys enjoyed the two parts I enjoyed where he was asking for naked women <laughs> to, to be in his movie. And then where he tried to say the movie was cursed because somebody's working on its grandmother died. That was two gems from Paulo we didn't quite get to touch on, but I hope you enjoyed it. it doesn't one, one, other th one thing that is important to say with Paulo is that the gap episode where we do look at all things Paulo and the movie Gap with my performance in Paulo's one and only feature film um, that is available that uh, we did an entire uh, episode of Dating Max Tales from the Satellite so go uh, go find that in the archives they're right here on patreon.com slash eastside hell yeah much like the movie Gap that's a cult classic of all the oh, Eastside Dave fans yeah. cult favorite yeah, now absolutely. Paulo goes, you come back. It, I thought it was kind of contextual. You were talking how D Wade has never done anything in the NBA and was going to fake a flu game in the finals. And it's just kind of relevant of the year. But then he went on to have a good legacy, which was kind of funny. That said, it leads to Ron's favorite movie. He's like, fuck Dallas and fuck that movie that was based in Dallas. It was so bad. I walked out of it, the movie. And he goes, and it was on cable. So I just left my house for an hour and a half to make sure that I didn't accidentally end up on that horseshit movie, which I don't know what movie set him off, but he is hating movies as of late. Maybe it's The Gap. Yeah, I mean, it could be. Or or all the, the bad summer movies uh, that goes on. Um, but that's kind of funny. So that was the D-Wade Shaq team. In yeah. 2006. Wow. That beat the Mavericks. Yep. Holy shit. All right. I actually had their poster on Crazy. my wall growing up, believe it or not. Those two. <laughs> I don't know why or where it came from, but I was like, I like those two. They're fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the callers start to call in, and this is where the lines are drawn in the sand. A lot of pointers, callers point out that you may be coaching Earl and saving him. You know, he's done some very embarrassing things with women over the year and dropped the ball a lot. And this is, again, pre Lily and a lot of the shit that came out there. So this is early on. So he did kind of fuck up you being the ultimate heel and turn some of the audience on you. Because again, just when you compare the two people as radio folk, even though you're trying to be mean, you're the more likable guy. I stole the guy's emails. I obviously know that it's wrong in my heart as a human being yeah. where it's 18 years later, folks. I know that that's not a, a nice thing to do. I also know that we were doing a thing called a radio show at the time. And sometimes it's just fun to mix it up and have a little fun and, yes, be the bad guy. But, yeah, you're, you're, you are right that Earl's panicky, jump-the-gun, fucking weird beat me to the punch that makes no sense. It actually detracted from Earl. Being the good guy. Yeah. It, it, it lessened the sympathy and empathy. Again, this just trust you. This is not the first time this, is, this has happened. I, I, I think he's confused as to the roles. Maybe he should be the bad guy and I should be the good guy then. Because I'll be the best goddamn fucking baby face your ass has ever seen. And then you did. Allegedly. Jesus. Yeah. You literally like, did like, with like, the writer, you know, allegedly. You came in and were like, watch this. I can show you how easy it is to just be positive even if you're not good at your job and people will love you just watch and then you showed them how easy it was to do that job as well and then went back to the dave character at night and was like watch how easy it is to be a heel you were just literally running circles around him yeah no Jeez, wonder he had head problems he was dizzy from trying to keep up with you he doesn't it doesn't need to be a race let me get out in front that At all times, I get out in front, and then you come from behind and win. And everyone's happy. Of course. But Sorry. if you fucking get, if the good guy in the race, to see he jumps the gun and he gets a false start, but then he decides, no, 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 that, that was legal and he runs the race, he no longer is the good guy. Now he's the bad guy. He made it. He's the one who brought it up, not you. Golly. 
Golly, Earl Dougie. That said, and I'm only saying this because exacerbatedly, he made the same mistake recently when he tried to randomly, you know, like we discussed months ago, and you could find those archived episodes. And I was fired up. We just, just just decided to take my beloved Scheiser list, the bit that I've been doing for 14 years on the Davey Max Sports Program and Eastside Dave Show combined, and he threw me under the bus, but there were no reasons. He didn't give me a reason. There was no engagement. He didn't then come on the episode. So, so he, he literally was just calling me a fucking asshole and <laughs> then do it, and doing my bit on top of it so that I could find in the comment section, yeah, fuck that redheaded fucking asshole. And I'm like, what the fuck? And that's the guy. By, and by the way, at this point, realistically, I'm more of the underdog. You work for the machine. You work for this big, huge fucking corporation, Sirius XM. You have the backing of all these people. So you're actually the bad guy. And then he comes out on Instagram and just shits on me. It says I'm on the Scheiser list when I didn't understand what I did, why I was there, what was the reason for this? Are we doing something? Are we working together? None of this was communicated with me. So he's literally making the same mistakes 18 years later. It's kind of like that Harry Chapin song, All My Life's a Circle. It's crazy. Again, Earl. Don't worry about trusting me. I'm way more talented than you are. I should be worried about trusting you. That's the way it works when someone is exponentially more talented than the other. Mm -hmm. I have to worry if you're going to drop the ball. Kind of like this show. <laughs> you yeah. have to worry if I'm going to drop the ball. You know yeah. you're going to be good. <laughs> I mean, I like the Paulo sidetrack we went on to. Oh. But then I forgot the, what fucking a goddamn episode we were doing. It was about our only emails. Well, you know, it, a lot of great lines by Ron we wanted to play. <laughs> yeah, but next time we can't go 15 minutes on the wrong highway for a one-liner. It's called ratio, bro. You know what the kids say? Ratio? I heard it's ratio. <laughs> no, that was my ex-girlfriend. Well, I've got a million fucking killer lines is my point. But weren't you just saying we're about not, talent? We, 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 can't take out, we can't take out 15 minutes to do a, a, a to cover a five-second Ron one-liner when he probably has 300 fucking hysterical one-liners for every goddamn episode is the point. Anyway, Jim, as, that's, as that's you're problem. absolutely right, and I apologize. That's on me. As uh, Rascal Flat said in the movie, cars, life's a highway, and sometimes you got to ride it. I accept your apology. See how easy that was, Earl? That's all now they, Robert and I are on the same page again. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's all that had to be done, Earl Dougie. I'd argue a closer oh. margin of talent between you and I than him. And, and you know, friend. Robert, let's just stay focused on Earl for a second. I have done some horrible things, but I believe in my time, I apologized once or twice. I'm once sure. or twice. Yeah, I'm sure we can find that at, at some point. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the Christmas episode <laughs> where it's just Dave and Mitzi. Was well, wrong. I'm trying to think. In any of the 30 previous episodes, did I ever apologize to Earl for anything? I, I feel like I did in, in the previous 30 episodes of this show is what we're, I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely. Even in like one I of did. the blow-up episodes, you definitely, right. like one of the first on-air fights, you apologized. He's never apologized to me, ever, in his no. entire goddamn life, as if he's never done anything wrong by me. He's never apologized to me for anything, including that shit six months ago where I didn't understand what was happening. So I naturally felt attacked, which I should have. No, that's fair. I'm not judging you. I will say, even despite Earl stepping on his own toes, you did manage to get the audience in a bit of a frenzy because a number of people are calling in saying that this is a legal crime. One of my favorite lines is, what, he's listening to Earl's phone calls, private phone calls and text messages? Who does Dave think he is? The federal government? I wish I was. And that was a great line. If I yeah, if I had access to Earl's phone calls and voicemails, I would have been doing that as well. You got, you're goddamn right. I would have been spying on him. I don't know what, what the fuck he's up to these days. A lot of people are saying, Earl, you're the executive producer. You were saying it at the beginning of the bit. You got to go to corporate with this. This is a corporate issue. And so, like, it's starting to work. And so it gets to the point where I feel like you might be in a situation where we need to do something on air just to stop. Because even if 
What a bunch of pansy fucking phone callers, by the way. Wait, 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 uh, what you want. Now I'm going to heal out on all of you. You worked them. You motherfuckers. You soft, pussy-ass bitches. What would you rather have? Ron asked me if, it, if, if I saw anything on the computer, and I go, no, Ron. Okay, and then what? Silence for 45 minutes? People narking each other out and, and encouraging others, go to corporate. Go to corporate. Go to HR. That's why those buffoons think that I'm the crazy one and Earl is sane, and why I can't get back in that fucking stupid building. I, I do think that's part of it. I also will say in the audience's defense a little bit, the callers, this is 06, right? So you're relatively new to the team. Is that a fair statement? Half a year? Prior to months, that. Seven <clears throat> months, December 2005. Pri- prior to that, one of the, it wasn't a joke pyramid, but one of the like running gags was if somebody did something that could get them in trouble, like the idea of them potentially losing their job over it was something the audience would hold over their head. I'm thinking of Billy Staples wiping his ass with uh, Al Duke's check. Like, so they may have been just like, oh, this is what we're supposed to do. This guy's in the hot seat. Let's see if we can make him there. You know what I mean? I don't think they were genuinely oh. trying to get you. Oh, okay. But I think they, they you I worked back. Them, like we I take back everything I just said to every, every single one of those callers. That said, he has CTE, folks. He's angry. It's okay. I do have CTE. Look at the eye. It yeah. hasn't healed, and I haven't been sleeping well either, Robert. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Three to Dave. four hours a night. That's but, why I'm driving to 7-Eleven at 2 o'clock in the morning to get fucking cigarettes, and the goddamn fucking police officer can't get off my back. When May I reveal when I offered you not to do the episode if you weren't feeling well what you said to me? When you said the eyes are I don't remember along. what I said. This was uh, yesterday. No, this was today. You said the eyes a hell of a long way from the heart. And I was like, that's that's impressive, Dave. Did I say that? You, Yeah, I think you were quoting her, Brooks, but it was pretty impressive. Cut me, Mick, cut me. That's so right. it does get to the point, though, where I think they're like, all right, we need to do, there needs to be a resolution on air. We don't want this to carry over off air, right? A, a lot of bits get to that point where we need to do something where it's like, oh, we've solved this so we can, you know, say, oh, the whole thing was a work or something like that if need be and the idea comes you volunteer it now the way it sounds like ron phrases it like this is 100 percent dave's idea you heard him offer it we didn't come up with this it made it sound like ron wrote you on a note and was like say this you offer to let earl slap you you go well that make us even and it literally felt like mom sorry i called you dumb i'll let you hit me if you don't tell mom yeah it's, i mean uh, that was that was probably my idea uh, it makes sense. You you were always willing to sacrifice yeah. the body. I, Dude, I always yeah, appreciate I mean, yeah, that about it's, you. It's, you know, it's something audio. You can maybe, if he does it right, you, you can get the slap sound effect, and then you get the pain sound effect. So I'll take one for the team. Well, we've talked about Earl a lot, Dave. Do you think he did it right the first time and got the sound effect you were looking for? Or no. do you think he hit you way too high on the face? Way I think too he hit hard. me in the ear. He hit you in the ear. And did he hit left, me in the ear? He hit you... Sounds like not hard. Yeah. Ron goes, comments on that and goes, that wasn't nearly hard enough. And you go, no, it was pretty hard. And you come up and apparently starting to rise on your skin is Earl's handprint on your ear. Like from the yeah, side of your it, face where it's, he caught you in the ear. That's very frustrating. That happened to me at IWF where I had to, uh, I won't say who it was, but they were supposed to slap me in the face. And they went back and slapped as hard as they could. And I said, I don't mind if you slap as hard as you could. Just make sure you're getting the face. You know, get get the old cheeker. Get, get it, the old cheek. Cheek, make cheek. Make that cheek, noise. Cheek, yeah. Cheek, cheek. Cheekity cheek. And they wound up with as hard as they could. Boom. Right in the fucking ear. And you that's, go, Jesus Christ. I fucking <laughs> told you. The one place I said, don't hit me in my goddamn ear. So yeah, Earl Earl has the same uh, bad uh, accuracy as that professional unnamed wrestler at IWF, who I will get my revenge against. By the way, on September twenty first, Northern New Jersey, it's IWF Unstoppable. Yeah, I'm going to plug for a second. Plug away. Maybe it's coming up. Maybe I mean, my God, it's September. It's Saturday, September twenty first. 
Davey Mack, the New Jersey's greatest manager, will be there managing my man, first class Justin Adams. I'm going to get revenge on all kinds of people. So be in attendance. Get your tickets at CampIWF.com. See you in North Jersey. Okay, Robert. No, definitely get your tickets. Now, I don't think Earl cracked you directly on the side of the year because that's literally like a Kramaga disabling move. It disorients your brain. That's almost a guaranteed concussion. Well, it's, because you know, it shoots the pressure in. Up, though. So, but, but I'm saying like that's incredible. So I don't think Earl got you that bad. But I just think he missed your face at the point that would make a loud noise. So, Ron, so he hit me for nothing. Thanks. Exactly, and it hurt because again. Yeah, I know it hurt. You could see the well. I'm sure you did. I was telling the audience, big oh, guy. Okay. <laughs> so at this point, Ron does one of the most brilliant moves in radio. He realizes Earl may fuck this up when he goes for it the second time. Because you got to do it a second time so it sounds loud. So he calls in for a witness to at least testify that you got hit hard if it doesn't sound like. And he invites an E-Rock. And E-Rock witnesses the second slap. And it is a loud hard slap across the face like it it does its job everybody's like oh that got him and you i didn't go down you didn't go down thank god never got me down ray you never got me down but then earl tells a story and goes i got big hands i always slap hard and he tells the story of when he was on wnew and they asked him to spank a girl and he just wound up and went for it and left a welt on her butt. Yes, I remember that. So you do remember that? Yes, I remember that. He he was supposed to be doing like sexy spanking and he fucking hit her like he was goddamn mommy dearest. He just with sands the, the fucking coat hanger. Yeah, he just was the goddamn fucking, I don't know, Ike Turner came out of his fucking soul all of a sudden. <laughs> Eat the cake. <laughs> So this that's very I interesting. Actually, I do remember that though. Well, so so that happened okay. prior to this moment, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. And we yeah. as we've stated, I would say a plethora of times throughout this episode, this is occurring on 06, 08, 06. So June 8, 2006. Do you find it weird that then in 2007, a, an Opie and Anthony producer is pulled into the studio to spank a girl? And it is Eric Nagel. And what does he do? He spanks her as hard as she can, as he can, and on the ass, literally recreating the moment he was ah. in the room for that Earl Douglas told. He ripped I'm off calling Earl. it here of all the people in the world to rip off. He ripped off Earl Douglas. He ripped E-Rock. off Earl Douglas. He's not a creative person. We all know this. He's just he's he's a fat Ryan Seacrest. Always has been. Always will be. And you were a Letterman guy, right? Crest. That's that's Eric Nagel, Ryan Fatcrest, and that's what he likes. Top 40. Don't know how or why he ever has been uh, involved in uh, this world. And it's why he um, sunk three different platforms. Opie and Anthony, then Opie by himself, then Anthony by himself. Sunk all three platforms. It's amazing. The one guy who was in charge of all three things. He, he gets in charge of ONA, they die. He gets put in charge of OE Solo. He gets fired. He gets put in charge of Anthony Solo compound. The fucking the entire goddamn company goes down in the toilet. So they, he's not a creative person. And again, you know, I don't know how he got involved. I don't know why he wants to be involved in, in this world because he's never been good at it. He's not talented nor creative. So it makes complete sense that he would rip off of all people Earl Douglas because he doesn't. Eric Nagel doesn't. Eric Iraq has no creativity and mind of his own. He can only do what's been done before. That's how he was a producer. That's how he is. I can't, I will never call him a talent because he isn't one, but that's how he is, is he can only do what's been done before. He cannot create anything new. One million percent. You, you're a Letterman guy, right? I like David Letterman. Yeah. I mean, years ago, what do you want from me? So, uh, Chris Gethard is a comedian, and in his book, he paraphrases a Letterman quote, where the quote is basically everything, every format, every style that's been done and can be done has been done. So if you're going to take things, take inspiration from the best and make it your own yeah. rather than yeah. copy almost to a T the worst member of Sirius XM's bit. <laughs> you know, there's a big difference between those two things. 
He stole from Earl Douglas. <laughs> that is just a huge, gigantic red flag of, oh boy, this is someone completely devoid of creativity. Is it not? Absolutely. When you're stealing from Earl. Yes. Oh and if only somebody was there at his last venture to be like, hey, this is everything that's about to happen with these people we keep associating with. And then it played out almost to a T. Oh, yeah. I so pred I, I've predicted everything that's going to happen with the virus and then compound media to absolutely. a T to a fucking T predicted and everything that happened. Then you and even pick up people who can predict things who are like, hey, that guy seems like a woman beater on coke. He keeps fucking with me. Why are we siding with him? That seems crazy. And then what comes out later? Who knows? But anyway, oh, that's weird. <laughs> almost as weird as the fact that you made an hour's worth of lovely radio out of the fact that you've read Earl's emails. What should have been. And I would do it again. And I'm looking into getting some computer software to hack into Earl's computer. Don't say that. Do not say that. <laughs> Please don't. Why? <laughs> I'm not looking into good any computer software, but I am still looking into hacking Earl's computer. Is that what I should say? Uh, sure. Or just I'm not looking into Earl hacking Earl's computer. That would be the best. But I am looking into getting some spying computer software. What if we just which went? I will then <laughs> hack people with if we went i'm just gonna do, do nothing <laughs> illegal but i am very interested in what's going on in earl's emails <laughs> no but i mean in all honesty if he left his email open and i saw it it was right in front of my face yeah i'd 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 i'd, I'd read it now you know what's interesting years later on the east side dave show on compound media we had our own scandal where and and again i wasn't going to do this to jared because Jared and I have gotten along swimmingly for years. We're friends. Yeah. But Jared left open his Facebook instant messenger. Okay. Mm -mm. That's all he did. And the producer goes, Jared, you left open your, your, your Facebook instant messenger. And he freaked the fuck out and stormed off the show. This was before the show happened. I go, well, what are you doing? I wasn't going to read any of those messages on the air. But he didn't understand that. There's also a difference. If Earl had sent anything in there that was actually like vulnerable or actually yeah. personal, it wouldn't have come up. You're, you're good enough of a guy that you would have sifted through that shit. In addition to the yellow and pink, I'm guessing there were probably some reds. Where it's like, don't read this one as yeah. well. Or something like that. Because you are you are a good person. You're just very good at playing the heel. Thank you. No, I mean, uh, what I'm saying is I have some discretion, I guess. I don't know. But at the same time, I mean, if it was over the line, you know what's over the line? You know what's over the fucking line? Day two of my goddamn radio existence. And Earl shuts off the Grammys in the Opie and Anthony office because he's watching the Yankees game and he's the only person who was. And when they confronted him on it, he didn't confess and instead let all of the heat come to me. As they described, even though I was a paid producer, they were speculating, I wonder if it's that weird, tall, redhead who guy. Who, and I Earl take full take responsibility. All, Earl, let me take all of the heat. For that fucking fiasco when it was all on him. And that was day two of my employment. So you know what? From that, that was the biggest chicken shit cowardly thing ever. Fuck it. Anything I, any, any goddamn thing I can do to put the heat back on him, I will. On. I will. And on that note. And he never apologized for that. So hopefully we get an apology from Earl. Make Years sure you... later, why not just make a... Con How about this? Confessions of the Past. A new segment on the Bennington Show. It's called Confessions of the Past. Stop selling our Famous goals. <laughs> fucking moments that Earl finally has to come clean about. Number one at the top of the list, it was Earl 
who changed the channel in the Opie and Anthony office from the Grammys to the goddamn Yankee channel so that he could watch the game. And only Earl. I want him to confess that on Earl Douglas's Confessions of the Past. Get some nice, beautiful music, you know, Days of Our Lives type of deal. Yeah, hell yeah. And you know what? Earl, if you can't do it on Bennington, we welcome you here. If you want to come in. By the way, Earl, you are a a very welcome guest, and we will treat you so nice here. Uh, If you would like to be on our show, we will treat you like the superstar that you are. Absolutely. We won't (laughs) do anything bad. And I wouldn't. If if Earl has the courage to do a show with us via the Zoom, doesn't have to leave the old apartment or... Uh, as he called, uh, well, he calls his apartment the, um, you know, Sirius Here's XM Studios. Yeah. Where he locks himself in there because he doesn't like paying the, the JCP and L bill. So that's that's where he uses all of the electricity. If he does a show, it will be chivalrous. It will be class personified. We just have to get to the bottom of some of these questions. That's all. Number one, did you, you were the one who changed the channel to the Grammys. From the Grammys to the Yankees in the ONA office. Were you not? Just That's just it. just just tell everyone you were. And here's the good news. <laughs> Opie, gone. Anthony, gone. Erock, gone. Nobody can be mad at you for changing the channel. <laughs> no one. Who gives a shit? Yeah. They don't give a shit. No one gives you shit. Come it's on and un- do it. It's time you fuck. Because to do that to someone who just starts a job. Yeah. To hilarious let them take all the heat of something that you and only you fucked up to me that is a low rent cowardly thing that i would never (laughs) do and i never did if interns or shit i I took plenty of heat on the ron and fez show or anywhere at sirius a anybody I, i took heat i'm not gonna you know you know throw some goddamn poor newbie under the bus you are heat personified. That's weak, Earl That's Dougie. It. And you know what, Earl? Come on and tell Dave you do it again. Just like he said at the end of this episode. Be like, I did it and I do it again. And people will respect you for that. Absolutely. We love you, Earl. We love Bennington. We love Ron we and Fez. We, we love, love all of our fans. Thank you for tuning in. Check out everything Dave does over at EastsideDaveCountry.com. YouTube. You got Eastside D- YouTube. Dave TV on YouTube. May, let me tell you something. YouTube at Eastside Dave TV. New Davey Mac sports programs. Kicking the ass. Davey Mac and uh, Eastside Dave and Son uh, wrestling show. Kicking the ass. Probably might do a Yaddle channel this week kicking the ass and more and more and more make sure sure you are the full archives of the east side dave show comedy sketches fantastic ones that me chris pepper stanley roy harder sean o'barry did uh you know just all kinds of shit go check it out and for me make sure you check out everything dave does because i'm usually a part of that you can see me headline the laughing stock comedy club november 23rd that's a big deal please come out i don't want to kill myself and thank you guys for tuning in. On that note, good morning. See ya!